be there. Buy La Bats Blue, Canada's number one selling beer. It's Blue Heaven. Buy Carl's Jr. with many convenient locations near you. And buy your local Volkswagen dealer where you can experience German engineering the Volkswagen way. Hello again, everybody. Tonight from San Diego, it's Hawaii against the San Diego State Aztecs. I'm Jim Leahy, along with Rick Blangiardi. Tonight, Hawaii, stunned last week by their loss to UTEP, goes up against San Diego State, a team wounded by its schedule. They have lost three games to Pac-10 teams, and yet, almost miraculously, they are still in the Western Athletic Conference football race. They have defeated Air Force here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, but they lost big last week to Wyoming. Now, the Rainbows come in here with a loss. They must win tonight. It is a pivotal game for both teams. Pivotal game, Jim. A lot on the line for both ball clubs. This was a season of great expectations for San Diego State. After coming into this year on a sub-500 season, after being the champions, Denny Stoltz said, we are better, bigger, stronger, faster than that 86 ball club. Yet they came into the year knowing that they had to rebuild two key areas. One, their defense, and it's been much maligned, and two, Phil Todd Santos' shoes. Both of these teams had been giving up huge chunks of real estate on defense. Both had give up over 440 yards per game. So we should see a real shootout tonight. It could be the team that has the ball last may be the winner. Perhaps, but Platt, the quarterback for San Diego State, has had one big problem. He throws for lots of yards, but he's only thrown one touchdown thus far this season. So sit back, everybody. It should be a wild affair. Hawaii against San Diego State, live from San Diego. Hello again, everybody. Tonight from San Diego, it's Hawaii against the San Diego State Aztecs. I'm Jim Leahy, along with Rick Blangiotti. Tonight, Hawaii, stunned last week by their loss to UTEP, goes up against San Diego State, a team wounded by its schedule. They have lost three games to Pac-10 teams, and yet, almost miraculously, they are still in the Western Athletic Conference football race. They have defeated Air Force here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, but they lost big last week to Wyoming. Now, the Rainbows come in here with a loss. They they must win tonight. It is a pivotal game for both teams. Pivotal game, Jim. A lot on the line for both ball clubs. This was a season of great expectations for San Diego State. After coming into this year on a sub-500 season, after being the champions, Denny Stoltz said, we are better, bigger, stronger, faster than that 86 ball club. Yet they came into the year knowing that they had to rebuild two key areas. One, their defense, and it's been much maligned, and two, Phil Todd Santos' shoes. Both of these teams have been giving up huge chunks of real estate on defense. Both had give up over 440 yards per game. So we should see a real shootout tonight. It could be the team that has the ball last may be the winner. Perhaps, but Platt, the quarterback for San Diego State, has had one big problem. He throws for lots of yards, but he's only thrown one touchdown thus far this season. So sit back, everybody. It would be a wild affair. Hawaii against San Diego State, live from San Diego. Tomorrow night, the Kings move up north to Calgary, Alberta, and their first look this new season at the very troublesome Calgary Flames. The hated Gretzky against the Flames in a Kings uniform? You can't miss this one. See it tomorrow night, exclusively on Prime Tickets. Prime Ticket falls into October with sports television at its best. Wayne Gretzky and the Los Angeles Kings open their exclusive 60-game Prime Ticket schedule with nine big early season ice wars. Prime Ticket's College Football 88 has 15 giant contests featuring, among others, USC, UCLA, and San Diego State. And Team Cup Volleyball returns featuring some of our great Olympic stars. It's a great way to begin our fourth year on the air in October on Prime Ticket. It's Prime Ticket's Pac-10 Game of the Week. And tomorrow night, we've got a brilliant matchup as Washington State and Arizona talk football business in Tucson. See it tomorrow night, the Pac-10 College Football Game of the Week, exclusively on Prime Ticket. Welcome back, everybody. San Diego State University, 1-4 on the season, 1-1 one one on the whack. It is the largest of 19 schools in the California State University system. And they are having their 47th homecoming tonight. Series record, San Diego State leads 6-5-2 and two in San Diego. It's tied. And in WAC play, it's also tied. Last meeting in Honolulu, Halloween night, San Diego State came from behind. 
to defeat Hawaii 29 to 21. The Rainbows have not been able to beat San Diego State since 1984. The last time the Rainbows came in to Jack Murphy Stadium in 86, it was a nightmare. As San Diego State ran away to a big victory, scoring on only the second play. They really set up what was really an Aztec romp, and the Aztecs went on to win the whack. Since that time, Denny Stoltz has had his troubles. Patrick Rowe, you see his average, will receive. The Rainbows won the toss, and they deferred until the second half. Kicking off Jason Elam. And we are underway from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, California. It will go to Rowe on the one. The 20. Noses out close to the 35-yard line. 33-yard return. And making the stop for the Rainbows, Sean Abu. So Brad Platt will start at quarterback for San Diego State. Excellent field position for the Aztecs. You can see that he has completed 55% of his passes. However, it was last week that he threw his first touchdown pass of the year, and that was to Monty Calvert. He has been intercepted six times, but he has thrown for over 1,100 yards. Out of the huddle comes San Diego State. First down, the ball is on their 34-yard line. Monty Galbraith is wide to the far side. They slip into the eyes. Hewitt and also Jennings. It is Hewitt to the 35-yard line, and he's wedged to the turf there by the Rainbows. The backs and receivers for the Aztecs, Platt at quarterback, Paul Hewitt is the running back. The fullback is Jennings. The tight end, Kerry Reed Martin. The flanker, Patrick Rowe. And the split end, Monty Gilbreth. And Gilbreth is the leading receiver, and one of the Rainbows is down. Downfield, I think it's Danny Lewis, which will create a lot of problems for Hawaii, Jim, if that's the case, because he's filling in for the injured Kim McLeod. Well, you see the offensive line, Kevin Wells is a huge person. He is touted for all wax center. And Fortin, Vincent, Baldwin, and Hardaway at the tackles for the Aztecs. And concern now for Danny Lewis, apparently a knee injury. Well, what's really unusual is Danny's out there in the far right corner. The play was up inside to Hewitt. He was nowhere near the action. I think he just sort of twisted it coming up, you know, for run support. He wasn't involved with the tackle at all. And that brings up an interesting point about Jack Murphy Stadium. It is natural turf, but they have just resodded the Major League infield when the Padres play here. And the Chargers also play here, and so it's been torn up a little bit. It is uneven, and a lot of turf will give. Oh, very good point, Jim. This field especially has very loose turf in that we saw them placing large pieces of it down, and it's had to get kicked up. It's just been resodded. So we have to hope that Daniel Lewis will be okay. That really poses a problem for Hawaii in the defense. Again, with McLeod out, Lewis hurt, I guess we'll, you know, in looking at who's going to come over, Col Colson would move over and play one cornerback position, but whether they alternate, I'm not sure how they'll do it. We'll take a look at it. Chris Tevis has gone into the defensive backfield. He's gone in at corner. Colson on the other corner. Briggs is at uh, the safety. And Tressler is also in at safety. Big challenge now for young Chris Tevis out of Pussel, the freshman. And he's just going to have to play with some big shoes there, as we hope to see on uh, Danny Lewis. But he uh, looks to be limping pretty uh, strongly. Second down and nine from the 35-yard line, rolled to the far side. Gilbert to the near side. The ball is pitched to Hewitt. Rainbow's trying to string him out, and they do. Well, good team defense right there all the way. They play the sideline. You can see the pursuit to the football. in Hawaii opening up very early now. Mike Trussell with good tackling on up front. Well, you see the defensive line for the Rainbows. Dana Directo, Augie Apele, and Joe Seumalu. The linebackers, Odom, Maeva, Aulia, and Robertson. And the defensive backfield now with the absence of Danny Lewis, Chris Tevis is in there. Colson, Tevis, Tressler, and Briggs. Third down and nine for San Diego State. Gilbert to the near side. Roll to the far side. Split backs in for the first time in this game. Clap to pass. It is incomplete. It's a real big break. Colson very alertly on the tip, coming up with it and then getting a whole wall of blockers in front of him. 37-yard return, which real key, Jim, is the tempo of the ball game. As we watch Platt go back here, he's going to throw it to the little hitch man, and the ball is tipped as he's coming over. It actually wasn't hit. It goes up, and Colson alertly comes up with it. But as I mentioned, the tempo very key because San Diego State has played 
into a lot of difficulty early on in all five of their ball games. They have given up a lot of points in the first quarter, and if Hawaii can establish that and make that case again tonight, it could be great for the Bulls. First interception for Colson on the season. First down for the Rainbows, Billy Stevens inside the five. Billy Stevens getting the start tonight in place of Hikoti Fasaba because of the rib injuries, and Stevens is able to power his way down to the two. Maury Paul, the linebacker, there to make the stop for San Diego State. At the beginning of this year, San Diego State changed from a 4-3 alignment to a 3-4 alignment. Now, for this game, they have gone back into the 4-3. And that's part of the reason why they weren't able to get a nose guard to develop real well in that 3-4. Rainbow's in the power eye on short yardage. It is Junior Lopati. He gets over, but wait a minute, a penalty fly. I think Hawaii's right side of the offensive line move. Tough break. They don't want a mistake early on. We'll wait for the call, but I think it was the right side of the offensive line. That was Platt's encroachment offense. That was uh, Platt's seventh interception of the year, by the way. It went off the intended receiver, Jim Jennings, talking about the turnover. Rainbow's Mike Colson running it back to the seven-yard line. Rainbow's also apparently score when Junior Lopati goes over but the illegal procedure penalty moves the ball back to the six. Where it will be second down and goal to go. Warren Jones at quarterback may be changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Single set back to Stevens. Jones put it on the ball. Good call. Hawaii's been very effective this year using the arm on that quarterback draw. Nicely done. Good block in front, especially by Theo Adams. And that's a nice way to open up the ball game. So the Rainbows strike first. They convert the interception by Michael Colson and have a touchdown run by Warren Jones. Yeah, let's watch the block of Adams now. 59 right there, driving his man to the end zone. And what happens when the white shirt drives the black shirt backwards? The guy with the ball scores. Nice block by Adams. Fourth touchdown of the year, rushing touchdown for Warren Jones. Elam in to try the extra point, and it is good. We look at the scoreboard, 12.57, we're ready to be played in the first quarter. Hawaii 7, San Diego State, nothing. Interception by Mike Colson, who returned the ball all the way to the seven yard line. The Rainbows go seven yards in two plays, with Jones on a six yard run. Elam kicking off. It will go to Patrick Rowe, coming up to take it on the eight yard line. Row to the 20. He's dangerous. Finally, Terry Whitaker hits him, and he gets up from his friends. Plus the line Lima on the top of the pile. 21 yard return, but we have a flag down there. Penalty flag has been thrown. Maybe against San Diego State. It was thrown deep. I got clipping. That gives the official. And clipping has been called against San Diego State. Interesting thing about San Diego State in the first quarter, they have really had their trouble. Well, they've been much maligned. Right here last week, you got a good quote by Dabby Dawson, the Wyoming running back. He said, you can read it for yourself, that Coach Roach told us if we could jump on them early, they would roll over. That's what I was alluding to as well. This defense has appeared to be not very competitive. And there you see the graphic. And actually, you got to add the seven that Hawaii just got. You got 84 to 10 in the first quarter, and this game is very early on. It's really the key, I think, again, is establishing this as being sort of the same old song for San Diego State. If Hawaii can capitalize on that, they can get off to a big start. Gilbreth and Rowe are split to the left. High formation behind the quarterback, Platt. This is Hewitt, hit at the line of scrimmage, wiggling free, but then the Rainbow secondary comes up to hit him. Just getting back to the line of scrimmage, that time was Hewitt, and he may not be 100%. He may not be. There you see, 392 yards rushing, good average of 4.7 and six touchdowns. Augie Apelu credited with the stop for the Rainbows. Well, yeah. early, Second and ten. Early on, Jim, I think Hawaii's defense, now there's only been a few plays out there, but Hawaii's defensive front looking much quicker than that offensive line from San Diego State. I find that surprising. Gilbreth to the left and row to the right. Jennings at fullback. Hewitt is the tailback. Black throw in for Rowe. Overthrows him at the 20-yard line. Double coverage. Tressler there. Colson the... Well, Pratt's a guy in need of some, some confidence early on. Colson and Tressler doing a good job. Take a look at Brad Platt. Excellent all-around athlete. Good all-around athlete. 
it was all in, in the three different sports that he's played in. As we said earlier, he's thrown a lot of passes in the entertainment zone, but not in the end zone. And right now, thus far, looking a little bit erratic with his passing. Three wide receivers in the game now. Airy, Gilbreth, and Platt. Double wide receiver to the left. That's Airy and Platt. And the quarterback for 12 throws for Rowe. Picked off by Briggs. Briggs at the 25, the 20, the 10. And out of bounds, and the Rainbows have the ball again at the 7-yard line. Well, a great pressure by Augie Apelo. Yep, you know, they say the great passes start with good pass protection. That time, Briggs ends up with a 26-yard return. Well, interceptions start with a good pass rush, and right here we see it. The balls, I just talked about their quickness. Apelo coming in there, he gets caught to throw it and coming right in his face. Briggs intercepts this perfectly. He's playing back there free, goes up for the ball, he attacks it at the highest point. Again now, just as on the last interception, the ball is blocking very well as he gets up field and gives the offense excellent field position. For Briggs, that was his second interception of the season. The Rainbows have an excellent opportunity deep in San Diego State Territory. Keeping the ball is Jones all alone. High steps, cakewalks into the end zone, and the Rainbows now lead 13 to nothing, and we have 11.55 left to play in the first quarter. Well, you know, they talk about football being a mental game, a game of attitude, and we've talked, and maybe even belabored early on about this first quarter syndrome that San Diego State suffers from, and here we watch it. They just do not play the quarterback. Warren has a complete lane open, no linebacker coming down, scraping. Right there all the way. Excellent blocking up front, but nobody from San Diego State playing the quarterback. Elam in to find the extra point. It is up, and it is good. We'll look at the scoreboard, 11.55 left to play. First quarter, Rainbows of Hawaii lead San Diego State 14 to nothing. San Diego State has yet to mount any kind of an offense. We've played only three minutes and five seconds. It is 14 to nothing, Rainbows. Two interceptions, one by Mike Colson, one by Walter Briggs, setting up two touchdown runs by Warren Jones. 14 nothing, Rainbows, and you can see how quickly it has turned this game. Rainbows have gone in and turned up the volume right away. San Diego State has yet to respond in the first quarter now for the season. San Diego State has given up 101 points and they scored only 10. Well, credit the defense, though. Great pass rush up front. Those guys up real quick tonight and two very alert uh, interceptions. Rowe pulled down and Rowe had possibilities ahead of him. Oh, he saw the on-ramp to the freeway. Yeah, pulled down at the 28-yard line, 21-yard return. That, that time it was Abru again, Sean Abru. Nice job by Abru. He makes no mistake about it. Just one arms and just takes him down. You know, Jim, I just said I was surprised that the Hawaii's defensive front was quicker than San Diego State's offensive line because San Diego State's offensive line has been so highly touted. With the Bows up front right now, early on, winning the battle very clearly. Gilbreth to the left and Rowe to the right. Flat the quarterback. He's already thrown two interceptions. Back to pass yet another time. Throws. It is incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Kerry Reed Martin. Kerry Reed Martin having a very frustrating year through five ball games. He came into this season on the front page of their press book. A lot of people were excited about him as after his junior year, but having a rather disappointing season thus far. You know, last season, Reed Martin had three games with better than 100 yards receiving. He succeeded Bob Awalt now in the National Football League at that position. So second down and 10, Dave Schlipp, number 80, has come in now at tight end. Double wide receiver to the near side, that is Schlipp. And Rowe. Split backs. Draw play. This is Hewitt trying to get outside. He does. 35, 40, and bumped out of bounds. Hewitt was caught in the backfield only momentarily, but credit Hewitt trying to get outside. That is the first first down for the Aztecs. I want to credit Rich Ellison with his defensive call here. Hewitt picks up 13 yards, but they had the right play. Just don't make the tackle. You can't miss on that. Big Augie Apello just overrunning it as he stepped to the inside. And there you see last year's national touchdown leader with, what do you have, 24? 24 touchdowns. Scoring leader in the NCAA, Paul Hewitt. So San Diego State trying to turn that potential into actuality. It has been a season-long task. First and 10 from the 41. Rolling is Platt being chased by Robertson. And he is run out of bounds at the 36. That will go as a sack for Gavin Robertson. Oh, Gavin Robertson just showed a lot of athletic ability there. 
And you take a look at him. He just stayed in pursuit the whole way. That's his fifth quarterback sack. Gav not too modest there with five and Gav five hanging down and everything else. He wants to know who he wants you to know who he is. So it is now second down and 15 from the 36-yard line. Double wide receiver sets up to the left side. Hewitt, big hole. 40. Mike Evo able to wrestle him down. The ball is on the turf, but after the whistle. And that will bring up third down now for San Diego State. Uh, good secondary support. Briggs was over there. Trestle was there. They all kind of came up and closed on the ball carrier. Third down for San Diego State here at Jack Murphy Stadium, the site of the last Super Bowl. This was the same field where the Washington Redskins overwhelmed the Denver Broncos. Third down, flat, sideline pattern. Roll. It's thrown wide. Again, good pressure, that time by Jose Omalo. And that will bring up fourth down. Not a very natural release from Platt that time. You could see he really hurried it. I think he threw it a bit too soon, and he almost was trying to aim the football. And I think early on, having the things happen to him happen, have already begun to take impact on his head. 10.47 left to play. We are still in the first quarter. 14 to nothing in favor of the Rainbows. Walter Briggs is deep, and Joe Santos with a 43-yard average back Ready for the snap from center, standing at his 30-yard line. Briggs back at the rainbow 15. Good hang time. Briggs, no fair catch. He'll return it from the 10. Good move, 15, 17-yard line. 46-yard punch, 7-yard return. I'll tell you, I really like Walter Briggs. He'll hang in there. He does not want to fair catch the ball unless he's usually told to do so from the sideline, and he is very dangerous after he catches it. Tackle made by Ray Rowe, the tight end, number 89. Now, the guy we haven't really talked a whole lot about thus far has been Warren Jones. With the score up at 14-0 already, it would seem to a little bit of pressure off him, but it's really key that Warren had the big night tonight. Waiting for the change to be adjusted across the way. The Rainbows will have first down from their own 16-yard line. Billy Stevens is the single setback. Mahuka. And Junior Lopati are the wingbacks. This is Stevens. Stevens hit at the line of scrimmage. Good game tackle that down by San Diego State. Moves from the 16. Close to the 20-yard line. We'll see where they put it. That will bring up second down long yardage for the Rainbows. Back to receivers. Jones and Stevens and Lopati and Mahuka. And the wide receivers, Larry Conn Smith and Leonard Lau. Lau starting in place of Chris Wasco. The offensive line of Mosa Mosa. Larry Jones, Mark Nua, now up to 381 pounds at 6 7. Second down and seven. Jones looking to the sideline and inside. Doing the sacking. Lee Brannon was there. Well, we'll take a look at it now. San Diego State comes with some pressure right here. They have not had a lot of sacks thus far this year. In fact, last week, they only had three going into last week's game. They tried that against Wyoming, and that's what got them in trouble. Wyoming was able to capitalize against that blitzing defense. The defensive line, you see them? Then the linebackers, Copeland, Paul, and Mile. That's a change just for the game tonight. Peterson, Nettles, Triplett, and Early. And the defensive backfield. Third down, long yardage. Jones with time. Now it breaks down, and he is set. Brad Burton, who plays alongside his twin brother, Mitch Burton. And that defensive line, able to get by Doug Pahalo. Sacks, Warren Jones, two straight sacks. And the Rainbows will have to root it out of there on fourth down. Well, two successive plays, they've nearly totaled their season total. And uh, the Bulls are just going to have to regroup real quick. That's something that the San Diego State defense has not done to other opponents. Kyle Alou, averaging 40 yards of punt. Monty Gilbreth. Nine yards a return. Gilbert will have some running room. Takes it at the 47. Gives ground. And they whack him out of bounds at about the 46-yard line of the Rainbows. Excellent field position for San Diego State. 37-yard punt, two-yard return. Terry Whitaker on the special teams, credited with the stop for the Rainbows. But now, San Diego State, for the first time in this game, with excellent field position, inside Rainbow territory, 
They place the ball down just inside the 45. 14 0 Rainbows. Two interceptions. One by Mike Colson and one by Walter Briggs setting up the two scores. Monty Gilbreth is to the left and to the right is Patrick Rowe. High formation behind the quarterback. Black. Black keeps it. Hits pattern to Gilbreth. Hit by Brian Belcher as he's able to get to the 40 yard line. Good looking play that time by San Diego State. And Gilbert probably pound for pound the best player on the offense. We take a look at him. He's had a step in now. Alfred Jackson was their big all whack receiver, but Gilbert has stepped in. Jackson's out of this ball game with an injury. He's their big gun. He's the big weapon on offense. Here comes San Diego State, second down and five from the Rainbow Forty. Hewitt. Hewitt hit by Maeva after being chased around by Kavita uh, Sandofolo. And we'll say fumble. Both signaling they have it. They do. That's the third turnover of this game for San Diego State. Robert Land coming up with it. Heads up by Robert Land. One of the team captains for tonight's game. I think David Maeva came up and helped force it. We'll take a look at it here. As Hewitt starts to go to the line, He's got an opening as he tries to run for daylight. There you see Maeva come in. I think he's the one that actually strips the ball away. We'll take a look at it. Yeah, it's coming out. I think he just sort of lost it, but it was due to that initial hit by Maeva. So the Rainbows able to hold off San Diego State, and now they will try to take advantage of the third turnover. They've turned the first two turnovers into touchdown. First down from their own 36. Billy Stevens. 38. And that is what you would call a gang tackle. Half, half the black jersey. Very quick on their defense. Now that's a surprise. I would have thought that their defense, you know, being again, as we said, much more line up front. They made the transition for tonight's game to a four down lineman. I think partly also out of respect for Hawaii's offensive power and the strength of the running game. Ball is on the Rainbow 47. Second down and nine. Excuse me, 37. Mahuka on the pitch. Gets a block and out of bounds at the 47. Very close to the first down. He may have it. Well, Clayton Mahuka with a lot of pressure on him. If he can fill in tonight, he was tackled by Randy Peterson. If he can fill in tonight and play the big game in place of the injured Dave McArthur, as he's been a good swing player all year, and they can get a game out of Billy Stevens, although Fakava is in uniform tonight, that would add an awful lot to this offense. So first down for the Rainbows, and the ball is at the 47-yard line. Again, the single setback is Billy Stevens. Inside handoff to Junior Lopati. Gets close to midfield. And 7.07 left to play in the first quarter. 14-0 in favor of the Rainbows. Scoring early on, Casey Copeland and Tracy Mao there for the Aztecs. Copeland number 20. And Mao number 58. Mao being that middle linebacker, you see Junior Lopati. And every time he limps like that, you have visions of all that he has gone through. So the Rainbow second down and eight. Ball is kept by Jones. Good turn up field. And he may have the first down as he's able to get close to the San Diego State 40-yard line. Casey Copeland there again making the stop. Good hold. Well, unlike the last series where they sacked Jones twice now, Paul Johnson's come back on this play selection this year, spreading that defense out, not allowing the group going back to the option, just trying to open it up some and create some lanes for running. There you see Bob Wagner. And now for the first down, the ball at the 42 of San Diego State. Roscoe is now in the game. He is wide to the left. Single coverage on Roscoe. Randy Peterson, number six, picks him up. Jones gives the ball quickly up the middle to Stevens. Stevens draws a crowd. He's able to power his way from the 42 down to the 37-yard line. Tracy Mao, the middle linebacker, able to wrap him up there for San Diego State. Now Mao limps off, across the way. Good looking drive by Hawaii now. They've got the ball on the move. Lee Brannon goes in at that middle linebacker spot now for San Diego State. Second down and five for the Rainbows from the 37 of the Aztecs. Stevens, big hole, 30, 25, all the way down to the 22. 
Uh, good looking run by Billy that time. He hit the line real quick. He was finally brought down in the secondary by Linden early, but not before Billy picked up 15 yards. Great blocking on that right side by Jones and Adams. Replay should show it right here. You can see some guys just getting blocked down. Really, he's getting blocked, but he's able to come over, but Billy picks up 15 yards. Good effort by Fuka, the wing back that time. Yep, nice block by Clayton out there. So the wing goes on the move again. They have a first down at the 22-yard line of San Diego State, looking into a four-man front. Ball is given to Stevens, inside the 20 to the 18. That time he angles off the left side. So the rainbow is very consistent now in the ground game. Giving the ball to Stevens, the power blocking up front, and they've been able to move the ball on the ground. Jamie Collins in the game now is a wide receiver. Number 81, he is flanked to the right, to the left is Roscoe. Jones, the quarterback. Kicks, pitches back, this is Nabucco. The play very slow in developing, and Maury Paul able to read it well. Paul number 59 out of Oceanside, California, 6'3", 205-pound sophomore. Yeah, Wesselman also in there in the tackle, the other linebacker. They were very high on the linebacker core this year coming into the season. They felt if anywhere on the defense, that's where their strongest position was. They had the most depth most and the most experience. Third down now for the Rainbows. The ball on the 18-yard line of San Diego State. Triple wide receiver to the right in the slot is Alani Davis. Back to pass Jones, looking right. Now throws, it is almost intercepted. And there was nothing but real estate and pasture and meadowland ahead of John Wesselman. Well, he was going for Hey Cody Fakaba, who's come into the ball game now. As we watch Warren, Bulls were looking good on ground support, but here Copeland just comes in, he plays off, no block. And Warren's really lucky this ball's not intercepted. As Wesselman had it in his hands, there you see Wesselman's frustration. And now we see Jason Elam, who looked very good last night in practice and earlier tonight in the warm-ups kicking field goals. 35-yard attempt for Elam, 9 for 12 in field goals. His longest, 47. That's good. 4 one left the play in the first... It has been all rainbows. It is now 17 to nothing. No wiggies. Aztecs have given up 94 points in the first quarter. We said, uh, I think, 101. <laughs> but uh, the way we added it up was... Uh, uh, with our yeah. fingers. You know, it's in our if, fingers. If you count with your fingers, it's hard once you get over 90 like that to be accurate. 90, 94. You can see the San Diego State... Aztec fans here for homecoming, not exactly thrilled by the goings on here in the first quarter. I want to remind everyone at the conclusion of tonight's game, Rick and I will be selecting the GTE Hawaiian Tower Rainbow Player of the Game. The University of Hawaii General Scholarship Fund will receive a $100 catch award in the name of that player from Hawaii Hotel. Elam kicks off, Patrick Rowe takes it at the 11. Down the sidelines, and finally runs out of Rome, being hit out of bounds by Odom. Mark Odom. And you know, Jim, you can see, despite the fact the score is 17 to nothing, you look at some of these athletes out there in the speed, but they have people in the skill positions, whether it was Peterson or Rowe that time as we watch walking back, or even Kerry Reed Martin standing there. All that offensive line, they've got really good-looking people as athletes. And why it's not coming together, i got to believe, is more somewhere above the shoulder blades to the top of the head. I really do because that could be it's a very psychological mental thing in the first quarter for San Diego State they get behind very early Come on, get him. trying to juke step his way he's it. oh what a move 40 45 50 in the rainbow territory that was the Hewitt that went wild against the Air Force that was the Hewitt at 100 percent he was very elusive on that run as he really showed you what he could do number 32 for San Diego State Going to the right, back to the left, back to the right. Great move right there. All of a sudden, he is free in the Rainbow secondary. And the Rainbows have to chase him downfield. And they get him at the Rainbow 48-yard line. First down for San Diego State. That's a nice-looking 16-yard run. Hewitt again. 45. Hewitt at the 40. Briggs really belts him at the 40-yard line. But a good game on the play for San Diego State. That will bring up... Second down and two, good eight-yard run by Hewitt. 
Well, the Bulls have got to maintain some kind of intensity with their defense here. They don't want to let San Diego State come back and do anything early on because they're not used to doing anything early on, so you don't want to change the rhythm. Hewitt had a great game against the right Bulls. 87 yards, 24 carries, three touchdowns, and on the receiving end, he caught five passes last season against the Rainbows for 40 yards and one touchdown. Carrying the ball that time, number 29 for San Diego State in the, to the game in place of Hewitt, and that's Tommy Booker. I think it was Peter Whitehouse that came up and made the tackle. White Ants out of Sherman Oaks, California, went to North Hollywood High School, number 41 for the Rainbows. Booker used sparingly. Jimmy Ray, number 17, into the game, along with Dave Schlick, and they are wide to the left. Booker again, trying to get outside. Good block, 35 to the 32. Mike Tressler made the stop for the Rainbows. So San Diego State, for the first time, putting together a consistent drive, and they are doing it on the ground. Good running by Hewitt, and now by Booker. That's a nice brush block there yeah. by Jennings to swing well, him outside. Yeah, I'll take a little bit of exception there. Good, pretty good block, but Gavin took the inside lane. He took himself out of the play. Usually, the outside guy rushes and I would take. And I will take exception because I think that block was effective. That's what sprung him out. Ball is taken to the near side, and we're going to have a pass. ball was number 32 Paul Hewitt so Hewitt comes out here and throws for San Diego State and they get only their second touchdown pass of the year well it's a little kind of almost like a little dipsy doodle if you will because it's the halfback flat maybe not feeling the most confident to throw but Hewitt certainly does and that's a nice looking completion and he beat Mike Colson Rowe with the touchdown reception excellent catch by Rowe and San Diego State on the board here in the first period. It is 17 to 6. And to try the extra point is Tyler Ackerson. And it is good. And the Aztecs now have come back. 17 to 7 Rainbows. 147 left to play in the first quarter. Remember we went on and we said, Rick, that this could be the type of game that goes up and down the field. And we said that San Diego State has the kind of potential to really stick with the Rainbows, and it could be the team that has the ball last. Rainbows still have the lead, but San Diego State showed you by that drive they have potential, and credit them, they went deep into their playbook for that play to score. Well, they have a very prolific offense. They've had their problems, but they've been able to move the ball a lot. They can score. We said earlier on that Denny Stoltz came into this year saying, we're bigger, stronger, faster, and have a lot more better players than we had just two years ago when we won the championship. So the expectations, as we said, going into the cast were really great. So it's just a matter of whether these kids can put something together and gain that kind of in-game confidence. And they certainly didn't start off very good tonight. I guess the key at this point right now for Hawaii is not to let these guys get excited at all. You say that Rich Ellerson, the defensive coordinator for the Rainbows, is very upset. He knows that Rich is a real experienced coach. He's been on that sideline a lot of times. He can feel it. He can sense it. You jump out early, 17 or nothing. Hawaii's players got the book on San Diego State, the same as Wyoming did. They were thinking that. You just can't let up. He'll come right back and get right in it. That's a very good point. Ackerson kicking off. It bounces, taken by one of the up men on the 15-yard line. And a good stop by San Diego State. Dan Ohuna returned it for the Rainbows out over the 20. And we'll see where they put it. I believe it'll be close to the 25-yard line. Good look at Amosa and Pahau down there and Adams. Scoring drive that time real quick for San Diego State. And that's a good example of what we were just talking about. They can come right back up field. Only five plays to go 64 yards in two minutes. Doesn't take long to get them on the board. Chris Roscoe into the game as a wide receiver. He is flanked to the left. He's given it to Stevens. And Stevens is hit at the 26. Gains only one. We have not seen a Cody Fakava in this game as yet. One play? One play. He was an intended receiver. The one that... Uh, You're the, right. Wesselman right. almost uh, intercepted against Jones. 
Bill Sanga Politelli. Made the stop for the ring bus. He's out of Marino High School along with Lyndon Erler. Triple wide receiver now to the left of the ring bus. Second down and 10 from the 25. Jones rolling. Gets a block now. Throw sideline pattern. Complete to Rosco. Did he have possession when he went out of bounds? And we may have a late hit by San Diego State's Peterson. I think he had possession and it will be a late hit. Jimmy, Randy Peterson came over. But I, don't, I don't know about, i like to take a look at this one on the late hit, to tell you the truth, because Peterson just was playing Chris. And Chris, nice, nice timing, came down with the ball, kept his feet in bounds. This will be an interesting call. 17-yard pickup. Dead ball foul. First no foul. Defensive team. So that will end up a big break for the Rainbows and a big game. Well, it's a way to pick up 32 yards. First, you do it 17 on the catch as we watch Chris. Let's see. I... Okay, there it is. All right, all right. He's a little bit extra. Okay. Then they pick up 15 on the penalty. Bowes in excellent field position real quick. Chris Gaskell has gone into the game now wide to the right. Stevens remains a single setback. Wingbacks are Ahuna and Lopati. Keeping his Jones. Wants the pitch. Goes around the uh, potential tackler. And gets to the 35-yard line. And Jones knew that he hesitated a little bit too much that time, but he made something out of it. Kind of a heady run. He just sort of stopped dead in his tracks. And I think the defense just sort of overreacted. And then he cut back up inside when he created that lane. 42 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Mitch Burton credited with the stop. Gaskell again wide to the right. Roscoe wide to the left. Second down and three from the 35-yard line of San Diego State. Ringo's lead 17-7. Keeping the ball is Jones. The 30 to the 25. That's enough for a first down. Well, I think the offensive line is doing a real good job of sealing the linebackers and creating that lane out there. That time early, the defensive back had to come up and make the tackle on Warren as we watch him go back to the huddle. But what they're doing is able to seal those backers to the inside, and, and nobody's playing down, and Warren's getting the lane on the corner. So that's enough for a first down for the Rainbows. Gaskell and Roscoe again, the wide receivers. Mahona and Lopati on the wings. And Stevens a single setback. This time it is pitched to Mahuka. And Mahuka to the 20. Lyndon Early there to make the stop for the Rainbows. Good gain on the play. Yep, Clayton almost had it, though. He almost was able to cut back, but somebody held on to him, and that brings a close to the first quarter. So the first quarter comes to an end with the Rainbows leading 17-7 to and on the move again. When whippoorwills call, the bat's blue. The evening is night, blue heaven. I hurry to my Labatt's Blue. Oh, turn to the right. Imported beer from Canada. We'll lead you to my Labatt's Blue. Blue. Yeah. Yeah, From the people who taught you to expect a lot of car for the money, well, here comes another lesson. Before you buy a car, test drive a Fox at your local Volkswagen dealer. The first quarter statistics, first downs, pretty even, rushing yards, rainbows with a slight edge, passing yards, rainbows with a slight edge, but it, it was the turnovers, that's the glaring statistic in the first quarter, three turnovers for the Aztecs and two were turned into touchdowns. Yeah, excellent runbacks by the secondary, both and Briggs. And that really makes a big difference, and that really doesn't show up in that kind of a stat other than the turnovers being three. Second down and three for the one boat. The ball just inside the San Diego State corner. The motion is uh, Junior Lopati. The ball is by Billy Stevens. Stevens close to the 15 and close to the first down. Tracy Mao made the stop for San Diego State. It's going to be real close. I think they may measure it. I'm not sure. That's going to be 
short. Fourth down for the Rainbows. Fourth down and about a foot. So the Rainbows will probably go into a power eye. A oh, real foot, and they pick it up. I think it's third down. I think it's third down. In the it's third down. Now they change it to third down. I was wondering about that. Third down. All right, formation. A fumble. That ball is loose. And San Diego State has it. That's a rainbow turnover. Boy, I don't know how that ball came out like that. That just was shot back. It was like it was a long snap. It just scooted back there. If you take a look at it, the ball comes out. It's like Warren never gets his hands on. He's looking in front of him. I don't think he realized the ball went all the way back there. But well, Pocky tried to jump on it. San Diego State comes up with it. So San Diego State, Drayton came up with it. Number 26, Kevin Drayton out of Pomona, California. And it's first down for San Diego State. And the ball is at the 27-yard line of the Aztecs. This is Hewitt. Hewitt grabbed up around the shoulders and gets from the line of scrimmage the 27, close to the 30-yard line. Augie Apelu, Dana Director. So again on the play, close to three yards. Second down and seven. The ball at the 30-yard line. Paul Hewitt, nine rushes, 51 yards so far in this game. Row wide to the near side, Monty Galbraith to the far side. Jennings is the fullback, the tailback remains. Hewitt, Platt in trouble. Gets away from Directo. Platt run out of bounds in front of Robert Lamb. That play just didn't work for San Diego State. He wanted to give it on the reverse, but the Rainbows had penetrated into the backfield. Yeah. And Platt had a lot of company. And he still picked up a couple of yards, but here it looks like Sayomala is going to make the tackle. It fakes it to Hewitt, and then Joe's right there. I think he was kind of surprised, so he overruns him. Now he gets beyond Dana Directo and gets up for a couple of yards before Robert Lynn knocks him out of bounds. So they got a third and a long four. Gilbert is to the right, to the left is Roy. Back to pass, Platt. Throws, tight end. 45-yard line for San Diego State. Well, Hawaii, play calling that time. Yep, 12-yard pickup. Hawaii for a third and a long four really dropped off that time. There was really nobody there. Reed Martin on the delay just releases on the out. And here you can see Platt really not anything special with the play fake. But Reed Martin just runs the out pattern with nobody there. Everybody hits dropped off and Lane comes over to start the tackle. First down at the 45-yard line. 17-7. We're in the second quarter. Rainbows lead it. Double wide receiver to the near side. Platt takes the play action to Hewitt. Tight end again. Reed Martin to midfield. Martin is spilled there by David Maeva. So two straight passes to Reed Martin. Gain of five. Second down and five for San Diego State. And now the Aztecs moving again. 12.52 left to play in the first half. Rainbows jumped all over San Diego State in the opening moments of this game, scoring two touchdowns following two interceptions. And they then added a 35-yard field goal by Jason Edom to lead 17 to nothing. San Diego State came back with a touchdown pass of their own. Clap the throw. Gets away from Robertson. Has running room. And steps out of bounds at the 46. He may be a yard short of the first down. But I've seen some real strange things happen with Hawaii's defense. That time, Gavin Robinson was coming on the pass rush, was a step away from Sack and Platt, and he slipped. He fell down. And then Platt was able to scoot and get away from him. Finally, Brian Belcher comes up with the tackle. But, you know, what is almost near big plays for Hawaii is ending up with San Diego State making something out of it for themselves. Third and one for San Diego State. Jimmy Ray is the wide receiver to the far side. Gilbert to the near side. This is Jennings. First down for San Diego State at the 44-yard line of the Rainbow. Now you watch Jim Jennings getting up there. He's 6'4", 250 pounds. Big guy there in a fullback position. In fact, both their fullbacks are big guys, but Jennings especially is just a load back there. Jim Jennings was all avocado in high school. Avocado? Oh, he went. Were you playing the salad league? Oh, no, no. It was. It's the uh, avocado high school league. It was all avocado. Okay. From San Marcos. 
Ball is given to Booker on a swing. Booker hit by Maeva inside the 40 to the 37 yard line. San Diego State coming to life here now with a big first down play to give a nice situation with second and short. Tommy Booker looking very strong that time as he picked up nine yards on his carry. So the Aztecs now 36 yards from making this a very close game. And coming right back. And coming off of the turnover, in fact, because Hawaii is on its way to scoring and then the ball gets turned around and hit from San Diego State. Michael Brown is wide to the right. Back to throw, being chased. Gets away from a pillow, now throw, and it is complete. Inside the 35, and that is enough for a first down. Well, Hawaii gamble with the blitz on second and short, anticipating a long pass play. Great call by Ellison. They put the pressure on him, but Platt was able to get away and pick up the first down anyway. Briggs finally makes the tackle. Here you see it. Augie's coming to the inside. Odom's going to start to come up field. Then Augie breaks loose and almost gets Platt. Ball gets downfield. Remont with the good catch. Briggs right there, but they pick up the first down. I think Augie's hurt on the play too, Jim. I see him up near midfield on one knee. So Kerry Reed Martin with yet another catch. That's his third catch in this drive. And he's had a, and another first down for San Diego State. And he's had some pressure this week. There's been some negative uh, publicity as we look at some of the newspaper articles. And there we watch Augie walking over. Got to believe he's going to be okay. Big factor up there in the front for the defense. Augie Appel has been playing, I think, extremely well all season long. Very aggressive, very tenacious lineman. 11-19 left to play in the first half. And San Diego State putting together another consistent drive. Michael Broom to the far side, to the near side, and Jimmy Ray. Fullback remains Jennings. Shellback is Booker. This is Booker trying to find some open room. The 25 down to the 23. So San Diego State, good muscle football there. Good muscle football, Jim, and also we're starting to see the quickness and the speed at the skill positions pay off for San Diego State. Gavin Robinson was able to make the tackle downfield, but as Booker goes up into the line, there's nowhere to go, and then with those great quick feet of his, he just starts pumping and get to the outside and, and really ran to daylight as he got upfield. White Ants comes in, replacing Mark Odom at linebacker now. White Ants number 41 in white. Michael Broom to the far side. Hitch pattern to Gilbert. Good move. 20, 15, 10, five yard line. This crowd's coming alive. And so is that football team wearing the black, red, and white jerseys down there. Monty Gilbert, as we said, is filling in for, well, actually, he's been a starter, but he's having to take the load since they lost the all whack player now for Jackson. Gilbreth, considered by many the best football player of this team right now, shows you why as he picks up 19 yards with some great moves. Monty Gilbert, excellent with the ball after the reception. And now San Diego State, trailing in this game, 17 to 7. Has the ball at the five yard line, first and goal to go. In motion is Reed Martin. Ball is given to Hewitt. Hewitt at the four, the three, the two, very close to the goal line. Just short for the second effort. And third, he kept coming. Boy, he wanted that. David Maeva saves a touchdown. You look at it from the end zone. Maeva hit him, couldn't hold on, and that ball just short of the goal line. Rainbows, remember, led in this game early on, 17 to nothing, and now San Diego State inches away from getting back in it. I mean back in it. Quarterback sneak. They have not signaled. Quarterback sneak by Platt. They carefully unpile. If that's not over, now it is over. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it took them so long to make that call as they watched the bodies come up. Uh, he had a pretty good surge. But I tell you, I think they're back in it. Oh, they are. First touchdown of the second quarter goes to the Aztecs of San Diego State. Tyler Ackerson in to try to bring the Aztecs to within three. The Aztecs put together an excellent drive that time, mixing their plays well and using their talent. Reed Martin, Booker, Hewitt, Platt, Gilbert. 
There's the kick by Atkerson. It is good. We have a new game. 9-23 left to play in the first half. Hawaii 17, San Diego State 14. Larry Cox Smith leads the whack in kickoff returns and is third in the nation, 32-yard average. And he needs 27 yards to set the UH record for a kickoff return. So we may see Ackerson then kick the ball away from him to one of the up men, either Mahuka or Ahuna. 17-14, San Diego State is back in it. So the Aztecs, who came out, really got roughed up by the Rangos in the first quarter, have almost pulled even. They trail by only three. This is Con Smith at the 10. The 20 and one again. He took a shot. And Larry bounces right back up to his credit, but I think that's the hardest we've seen him tackle all year is Wesselman, the linebacker, who's getting up very slowly. I think he took the worst of it, gave up his body. Larry with the 13-yard return. Wesselman with a tremendous collision right there. You can't ask for a hot hit. You can see Con Smith just ripped around in midair. That was a collision of the highest order right here again. Larry fans fans reacting, it, reacting to the play on Diamond Vision here at Jack Murphy. Ooh. Lau is to the far side. First and 10 for the Rainbows at their own 24-yard line. Single setback. Keeping the ball is uh, Jones pitching to Mahuka. Mahuka spun out. And he's out over the 25 to the 27-yard line. You get the feeling here that the Rainbows have to put the ball in the air. Absolutely. I think they do, Jim. If you take a look real quick at the scoring drive by San Diego State, you can see good ball control, well executed. Anytime you run more than 10 plays on a drive, you've got it going for you, and that time they did it nicely. I agree, Jim. The ball's got to come back up in the air for Hawaii. they got to open it up a little bit and spread this defense. Tom Smith and Jimmy Lopani wide to the near side. Under Lyle to the far side. Rolling. He's done. And falls on the run. Great catch by Tom Smith at the 40-yard line. Jones paid for that, though. He took a heck of a shot back there. The Warren's credit he stayed in there and found Larry up the sideline. Picks up 12 and a first down. Warren rolling to his right. Pass all the way. He's looking now. He's got two guys. He's got a flood going on out there. You see the ball. Larry was able to get back, make the catch. Coco on the coverage. And Jones paid for it, as I said. He took a heck of a hit after he released the football. That is the fourth reception of the year for Con Smith. Came in with three receptions, 93 yards. Con Smith to the near side. Single setback against Stevens. First down for the Rainbows at the 40. To, uh, no, not given to Stevens. Kept by Jones, and he goes nowhere. Well, big play by Bob Graff, the defensive end. That time, he just came down the line. Warren had nowhere to go. Graff was in his face before he could do anything. See this play as he spins away from Stevens, and there's Graff right there. I mean, he shuts Warren down quickly. Loss on the play. Back to the 35. Second down and 15 now for the Rainbows. Lau to the far side. Con Smith to the near side. the middle and it will go as an incomplete pass intended for Clayton Mahuka well San Diego State simply has started to wrestle the momentum away from the Bulls and now it is the Bulls who look uncertain it is the Rainbows on offense who are having their trouble and they had a good look at big uh, P.O. Sanga Polotelli who's 6'6", 280 pounds and very quick for a guy that big Coming right back down from his defensive end position, closing on that shovel pass. Chris Roscoe now has gone, and he's picked up by Peterson, single coverage on the far side. To the near side is Con Smith. Third down and 15. They blitz. Look at Throw for Roscoe out in front. The 40, the 30, the 25, and it's twisted out of bounds. I saw a flag down here on the far sideline, Jim. It's still on the ground down there. I don't know if it came from an official or not, but there's a flag on the 34-yard line being picked up right now. Outside, defense, decline. Oh, you know that, will decline that. Well, great isolation coming up on Roscoe. 31-yard pickup here. There you see his ability to just get out there, Chris, with the good feet. Beats Randy Peterson. Now Warren delivers the ball beautifully. Chris on the dead run, and he keeps going. Only problem is he's too close to the sideline. 
a great execution all the way around by Jones and Roscoe. Now the Ringles have an opportunity on the 34-yard line of San Diego State. Ball is given to Stevens to the 30, 25, 24-yard line. That could be a first down. Lyndon Early out of Carson. Rather, uh, Gardena, California, went to Gardena High School and made the stop. Yeah, Early has a real unique distinction on this defense as the free safety being also the leading tackler coming into tonight's ball game, which tells you something about the San Diego State defense. Early came in with 50 tackles. He also leads San Diego State in interceptions along with Casey Copeland with two. Second down and inches for the Rainbows at the 25-yard line of San Diego State. Single setback remains Stevens. Jones to Stevens, first down. Russell's to the 20, Russell's to the 19. He's off to a good stop, but I'm going to use the word if anyway. As we watch Big Mitch Burton finally bring down Billy Stevens, but if Billy Stevens can give that fullback position with his play, the big game for Hawaii, it can make a tremendous difference tonight. Stevens with a lot of pressure on him to come through for the injured for Carver. And we've seen Billy spell real well, but now in that starting row, he needs the big night. So the Rundos now have gone out of the entertainment zone, and now... This is where the yards get tough. First down just inside the 20 of San Diego State. Again, it is given to Stevens. This time they wall him off as he gets to the 18. Gain of only two. Brannon there to make the stop. Lee Brannon along with Peel Sanga Polotelli. Sanga Polotelli is about as big as his name is long. What a big guy. Roscoe flanked to the far side. To the near side is Kyle Smith. Now Mahuka goes in the slot to the left. Triple wide receiver to the left. Second down from the 18. Jones put it in four. I think it was Brad Burton, big 91, the nose guard. Well, actually, he's not a nose guy. He's playing defensive tackle tonight to close down. I'll tell you, you want to talk about big guys playing for San Diego State. You mentioned earlier the Burton twins. They're both these the starting linemen. Both of those guys, Brad Burton, 6'5", 260, and his brother, 6'6", 255. Third down, long yardage for the Rainbows. Hey, Kofi Fokava now has come in to the backfield for the Rainbows. Roscoe Mahuka to the left. To the right is Con Smith. Jones looking left. Throws. Hey, Kofi Fokava, the ball may have been tipped. And it ended up short, fourth down for the Rainbows. Uh, you're quick, Jim, with the eyes tonight. The ball was tipped. John Wesselman, the linebacker, I think sensing pass, San Diego State blitz. They came up inside, and he got the hand on it. That's the second time that Cody Fakaba has been used only as a receiver tonight. Yeah, interesting. So another field goal by Jason Elam in the offing. They put the tee down on the 24-yard line. 34-yard attempt, angle from the right, out of the hold of Kyle Alou. And Moy Tua is the long snapper. High snap. Kick by Elam on the way. This one is good. You got a roughing the kicker call coming up here, Jim. It's going to be an automatic first down. They come into Elam. I think that's what's going to happen here. They really came into Jason Elam. The kicker there. Rainbows take the three off the board. Well, they're going to take the three. Maybe it wasn't an automatic first down. I spoke too quickly. I thought it would be. We'll take a look at it on the replay. Oh, a little inverting stuff. A little slide under the feet. Okay. That's borderline. Yeah. Right. Running into the kicker. There. Feels all is good. Going to go there for the kickoff. No assess it on the kickoff. But running into the kicker, that slight touch, even though it was inadvertent, five-yard penalty, five or 15, depending on the intensity, this one only five. 20 to 14 in favor of five minutes left in the first half. Yeah, and I'm not trying to sell too defensive, but I was watching the ball in the air. Then he stops, and he has uh, quite a job ahead of him here at San Diego State. San Diego State, when you talk to their athletic administration, they have big dreams. They feel that San Diego State should be the dominant team in the Western Athletic Conference in the 90s. But San Diego State has recruiting problems, especially with Pac-10 schools. That's their big competition. So Stoltz needs that winning record. And when you speak of recruiting, 
the same kind of recruiting problems would be for Bob well, Wagner because of the distance. One of the things that Stoltz did do to change the complexion of his team as far as recruiting was he has 27 of his players from the San Diego State, San Diego area here, which is a much larger number than they used to have in the past. So he's trying to go for the homegrown. In fact, that's their theme this year, the home team. That's what they went with because they had such a large number of locally grown products. Rowe and Slack deep. It will go to Rowe in the end zone. He will not return it. And San Diego State will start at the 20-yard line. Redbirds go 59 yards in 10 plays, 4 minutes, 19 seconds. Off the clock, 44-yard field goal by Elam. He is 2 for 2 in this game. Brad Platt, 5 for 10, 45 yards. Two interceptions. Both of those intercepts, interceptions turned into rainbow touchdowns. And so it will be first and ten for San Diego State. Trailing now by only six. They have been able to pull within three after trailing by 17. Well, it would be a lot to ask this defense has already produced three turnovers in this half thus far to come up with another one, but this would be a great opportunity and a great time for the defense to get one more. Gilbert and Roy are to the left. This is Hewitt. Trying to get around Joe Sayamalo. Sayamalo wraps him up at the 23 yard line. Gain of three. Second down. And about six and a half to go for San Diego State. Sayamalo number 55 for the Rambos. 442 left to play in the first half. Glad you're with us wherever you may be throughout the 50th state or watching us on prime ticket throughout Southern California, Arizona, Nevada. Been down, Mr. Barboy. Do it again. First down. He's at the 36-yard line. Great block up front by Kerry Reed Martin, the tight end. I tell you, those three receptions have brought Kerry to life. It's a good surge by San Diego State's offensive line. Hewitt's going to hit it up in there. He gets the good lane. He's got the hole. There's Martin now, right there, coming up with the key block that lets uh, Paul cut back across the green. Good job by San Diego State picking up that first down. Vita Sandra Pullman credited with the stop for the Rainbows. First down, San Diego State. They have the ball at the 36. Keeping the ball is flat. Hits down to Rowe. Gets a block. And then Rowe kind of runs over Kerry Reed Martin. Out from the line of scrimmage, the 36 out close to the 39. Well, tr quite a little, t little Mike Presser out there as he just came up and stuffed Kerry Reed Martin, who was sort of the single guy out there blocking for Patrick Rowe. And that's what caused the, the pileup. Tressler just plays very aggressively out there. 3.43 left to play in the first half. Second down, seven and a half to go for San Diego State. Reed Martin now as a wide receiver. The ball is given to Hewitt, and he is hit in the backfield. They will have a penalty for it. Sangapolo, out of Honolulu, went to Radford High School. Take a look at the call here. It's thrown real quick. I'll tell you, they're probably trying to hold Sango Polo. He's just exploding through there. He's just come to life. Good move by Rich Ellison getting Vita into the ball game. They're starting to play a little bit soft on the defense. Suddenly Sango Polo comes in there. you got some big surges going on as we watch it right here. There you see Sango Polo getting by and getting into that backfield. I saw a couple of offensive linemen holding on that play. I have to say which one they called it on. They declined the penalty, brings up third and nine. Big play for Hawaii right now. Third down and nine for San Diego State. will bring a fourth down for the Aztecs. Tough break for San Diego State because the Platts credit that time. The Bows gambled on a definite passing situation. Came with everybody. He had great pressure all around them. He stepped up into the pocket and just fired for Gilbert. So nice execution. They just came up with a little bit short. Walter Briggs standing back inside the Rainbow 35-yard line. Joe Santos from Vallejo, California, but he was born in Fiji. Waiting for the snap from center. Rainbows with nine men on the line of scrimmage. Good punt by Santos. Good game time. Taking the ball at the 19 is Briggs. Trying to get to the near side. Out over the 25 to the 27. 43-yard punt. That's Santos' average. 
Eight yard return by Brink, so the Rainbows will have the ball at their own 28 yard line. 20 to 14 in favor of the Rainbows. 250 left first half. Bob Wagner, who has cut his hair since last week's loss, he said as long as the four game win streak was intact that he would not cut his hair and he wanted to have shoulder length hair at the end of the season. So he started it again. Rainbows lead 20 to 14. First down at the 27th. Jones Lake. It's by Brennan. And out of bounds up over the 40 yard line to the 41. Well, really opened up for him once he was able to get by Lee Brennan, number 88. 15 yard pickup, but Warren showing some great open field running. Not great, but it, you know, he just got that good foot, foot speed. There's Denny Stoltz getting upset because nobody came over to play the quarterback, and Warren just turning around the corner. So a first half for the Rainbows, the ball just short of the 42. Roscoe to the left, and Jamie Collins is to the right. Stevens a single setback. Stevens gets the call and immediately gets mugged. Well, Hawaii has three timeouts remaining. There's 2.30 left to go in this half. And I would say that uh, with the six-point lead being what it is and the way the scoring is coming, they've got to find a way to get some points up there before the half to build a little bit wider cushion and to just establish the, the dominance that they opened up this game with. Very short game on the play. Second down, about seven and a half for the first down. Again, Roscoe to the left and Collins to the right. It is complete and wide open. The 30, the 25, and they say he went down there. And that is Junior Lopani. Good looking play all the way around. Somehow Junior gets himself open up the far sideline. Offensive line gives Warren the good protection. Warren very alertly sees him, gets the ball. You can see the ball be thrown upfield. Thrown upfield. Junior picks up 33 yards and slips as he tries to cut back to the inside. Stops the clock with two minutes remaining exactly here in the first half. So Lopati who limped off earlier in this game back. Good news for Rainbow fans. Wide receivers left and right. First down for the Rainbows on the 24-yard line of San Diego State. Jones gives the ball up the middle to Stevens to the 20. Second down and six. The use of the clock here is going to be very key. The Bows in all candor have been down here twice now in this first half. They were to come away with only field goals. In fact, one time they turned the ball over on a fumble. They've really got to find a way to make some, some positive yardage and the score down here where it gets tough. Rainbows have really been successful when Jones has looked one way and then come back and thrown the other. See if he does it here. Now timeout is called. At least the clock is stopped for the moment by Guy Gibbs, the official. And they may want to change the football. Well, they got one playoff, and they used, um, let's see, 44 seconds in one play. They've got three timeouts remaining, minute 16 left. They've got to use the clock smartly down here. Take a look at the Jack Murphy crowd here. Homecoming, 47th homecoming for San Diego. Second down for the Rainbows, and again, Guy Gibbs stops the clock. Clock had started ticking again. It went from 116 to 112. Bob Wagner wondering just what is taking place here. <laughs> Gibbs. Oh, they have me confused right now. I think he's up, upset with the stadium scoreboard, or the clock, rather. I'm not really sure, Jim. Rambos, Rambos have gone back in the, to the huddle, and we've mentioned again that where the ball is around the 20-yard line, this is where the yardage gets tough. We remind you, if you just joined us, the Rambos jumped off to a 17 and nothing lead. Two pass interceptions, one by Mike Colson and one by Walter Briggs, were turned into two rushing touchdowns by Warren Jones. Well, I think we got a clock problem. You can see Guy Gibbs talking to Denny Stoltz over there, and another official came over to explain it to Bob Wagner with him pointing up to the clock. The clock now says 116. I don't think that they wanted it to start, that's all. They put the four seconds back. So it went from 112 back to 116. The Rainbows led 17 to nothing. The difference in this game right now, two field goals by Jason Elam, one of 35 yards, one of 34 yards. 
Wide receivers left and right. Collins wide to the right. Roscoe to the left. Second down from the 20. That is pitched. This is Junior Lopati. The 20. The 15 yard line. And very close to the first down. Early over to roll Lopati to the turf. 104. Left the play in the first half. Oh, good looking play. Gets some nice blocking over there. And Junior running with some authority as he cuts it up off the right side. They're going to measure. We'll take a look at the San Diego State defense. Daniel Okuna has gone into the game now as one of the wingbacks for the Rainbows in their spread offense. So we'll take a look at this measurement very close to the first down. It was second down for the Rainbows. And they out the chains and they are short. Rainbows against Brigham Young next week at Aloha Stadium. That is a 5.35 start time, Hawaiian time. Well, we're real pleased to announce that that game has been sold out. We will be televising it live exclusively on KHNL next week. So 5.35 will be there. We hope you'll be there. If the boys can hang on and win tonight, play solid football, it is going to make for the most dramatic setting that you can imagine as these two teams clash in a real key game for the Bows. But they've got to win this one first. Not that that won't be a, good, a great game, but they've got to win this one here. Triple wide receiver to the left. Collins to the right. Collins has yet to catch a pass for the Rainbows. And they go for the first half. Quarterback sneak by Warren Jump. The Rainbows should call a timeout right here with 54 seconds left. And that is a first down for the Rainbows. So Hawaii able to nose the ball inside the 15-yard line to the 12. And they come right back. They take advantage of moving the chain so they don't have to call the timeout. Stevens, a single setback. Jones looks into the end zone as he rolls. Now throws. Touchdown, Roscoe. Good looking play. Warren rolling to his left. An effective pass rolling to his left. That time he gets open. Chris just runs a hitch pattern inside the end zone, 13 yards, he just gets right in over the line, and Warren just zipped it right in there. He beat Kevin Drayton on that play. Touchdown pass for Warren Jones, and for Jones, as far as passing is concerned, that is his seventh touchdown reception, and for Chris Roscoe, his third touchdown catch. Good looking play all the way as we watch it. It's a one-man pattern. He wanted Chris, he rolled to the left, Chris broke off, he gets open against man. Great moves by Roscoe, steady hands, Warren threw it right on the money. Good looking football play. Very impressed with that throw by Warren Jones. He threw the ball on the move and he delivered it right on the money. Well, San Diego State's call a timeout. Could it be that Hawaii with the ball in the hashes decided to go for two? And the way this game is going, I would think, Jim, maybe they're going to do that. Bob Wagner likes to do that. He has what he calls the sheet, and he looks at the sheet, and if, yeah. if they lead by so many points and it's not even, doesn't well, look right, they'll go for two. I give him, take a look at Warren I give Jones. Him credit as we look at Jones. On a day, the two-point plays have not worked. I didn't see it work uh, for Miami. Of course, if you're a Notre Dame fan, you're happy about that. And I didn't see it work for the Huskies against Southern Cal. Nonetheless, that was at a different point in the ball game than this one. It'll be nice to see Hawaii pick up two here. Then he could double the lead. 28-14. See, pretty good with the arithmetic. Very good. Better than I was. <laughs> Early on here. Mike Siwak over there. Talking with Bob Wagner. Again, if, if we were good with numbers, we'd be working for the federal government, for the IRS, or we'd be designing parts of rockets. It's a good thing we're not. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a few other reasons why we're not doing either one of those jobs, too. Rainbow's going for two. They lead 26 to 14. Triple wide receiver to the right. In motion back toward the middle is Collins. Now Collins comes back to the outside. Jones. Jones. And cannot hold on. It remains 26 to 14 with 43 seconds left to play in the first half. celebrating for the last couple of days. The alumni here in the Southern California area, they had a big get-together last night and all throughout the, the afternoon today in the parking lot here at Jack Murphy. And so the Rainbow faithful 
Yeah. And made the trip from the Fifth State, and a lot live here in the Southern California area. In fact, it's been kind of nice. It's been kind of nostalgic the last couple of years. I've seen a lot of my former players up here coming by, watching these guys turn into men. And they have, they've been men for a long time. They look terrific. It will go to Rowe on the two-yard line. Comes it for the moment. The 15. Out over the 20 to the 23. First down for San Diego State. 26 to 14 in favor of the Rainbows. San Diego State has all three of their timeouts remaining. Rainbows have two. Sean Abru again on the tackle. He has played very steady on the special teams tonight. Jones, 13-yard pass to Wilson. And for the two-point conversion, in and out of the hands of Jamie Collins. And you have to wonder whether or not uh, Coach Stoltz is going to decide to try to air the ball out here with 36 seconds remaining in this half. Gilbert is flanked to the right, picked up by Robert Ryan. To the left is Rowe. He's watched loosely. Back of pass. And they throw coming out of the backfield. Out over the 30-yard line to the 31. Kevin Minkin, who had just gone into the game. 6'3", 235-pound fullback. 23 seconds left. Well, they're going to call a timeout now. San Diego State, as you said, Jim, has all three remaining. They're going to take one. So 21 seconds remain to be played here in the first half. We were mentioning about the University of Hawaii alumni. This is homecoming for San Diego State. And San Diego State has had trouble because of their losses in getting the crowds that they need here at Jack Murphy Stadium. And they have a difficult time of it because they are in what is called a, quote, Major League City. They have Major League Baseball here, and they have the uh, National Football League football with the Chargers. So they need success to well, really get the fans going. They really need it. Nothing like, nothing like winning, and that'll do it, because I can remember just two years ago, as we look at some of the Hawaii fans, this place being packed in a couple successive weeks when they were playing BYU, and even the crowd the night that we were here uh, against them when they won the conference in 1986. They had the people, so they know it's possible, and that probably has added to the frustration. Uh, that's happened up here because the expectations were so high and they know what it's like to have it and then none of that has been sort of coming true. It's like, you know, wishing and hoping just never happens. 26-14, 21 seconds left here in the first half. stop the clock with 17 seconds or nine. Well, they took the timeout and stopped the clock, then they run it. Now they're going to go with no huddle. And they still have two timeouts remaining. And one, I'm sorry, one timeout remaining. Not able with the tackle that time. First down for the Aztecs on the 35-yard line. They're on 35. Black makes the play. And he gets it to Reed Martin. 40, 45. Rainbows will let them have all of the under covers that they want. That's enough for a first down. Five seconds left. Time for one more play. And time for me to get this in for our good friends at McKinley Car Wash. Because when we were on the road with the Rainbows, I really missed the Aloha spirit back home. Like the friendly spirit at McKinley Car Wash. I want you to keep serious, James. I'm trying to do my best at this. At McKinley, everyone is trained to pamper you in your car. They don't quite like pampering you once in a while. To make you sure your car is clean inside and out. You have to clean yours inside, that's for sure. Expect only quality service at McKinley Car Wash on Kapilani and Klee, because their goal is to make you shine. First down, last play of the first half. Flat, three man pattern, four man pattern. Throws down the middle. It is incomplete. Intended for roll. There was some pushing going on. Uh, that will do it. That's the end of the first half. Rainbow score 17 in the first quarter. They had nine in the second quarter. The Aztecs come back with a pair of touchdowns. It is 26 to 14. First half statistics very even as far as these two teams are concerned. You can see the first down rushing yards, 111 for the boats, 103 for the Aztecs. Passing yards also very close. The turnovers again. Uh, the Rainbows having to take advantage of those turnovers and doing quite well in doing that. Time of possession, not that far apart either. So as far as the statistics are concerned, it is an even ball game. On the scoreboard, that's another story. Rainbows leading 26-14 to 14 going into the third period. Rainbows will have the ball at the start of the third period. Tyler Ackerson will kick off. Deep is Larry Conn-Smith. 
Rainbows will be moving from north to south here in the third period. There you see Con Smith. If the Bows can strike first as far as scoring opportunity, it will make a big difference in this entire second half. Ackerson's kick, excellent kickoff. Con Smith comes near the sideline, takes it inside the five at the four. To the 15, 17, that's all. Rainbow will spin him down, I'll tell you. One thing about San Diego State, they have covered the Rainbow's kickoff and Larry Con Smith better than any team so far this year. Maury Paul there to make the stop. Interesting graph here because when you look at the first two touchdowns, you actually see quite clearly how little the Hawaii team had to do to get into the end zone. And the rest of it is some pretty good efforts after uh, after the punt. But those first two scores were just like, here you go, game will spot your 14. Great break for Hawaii opening up this ball game that way. First down for the Rainbows on the own 18-yard line. Pitch goes to Ahona. They spring him out as he gets to the 20. And I might add, hey, Cody Fakava starting in the second half, third play. You see Lee Brennan making the tackle, coming back over there, but Fakava in the lineup on a running play starting the second half. He has yet, however, Rick, to run with the ball. No, I agree. And, and, and we will see if he is 100% if he does so as he remains in there. As you look at Denny Stoltz, he the play of only two, second down and eight for the Rainbows from their own 20-yard line. Jones, sideline pattern, Rosco. And it seems right now that the Rainbows can go, excuse me, not Rusko, but Con Smith. I stand corrected, Larry <laughs> Con Smith. Yeah, but I know what you were going to say, yeah. if they could go to Chris, and I think they got a lot of respect for both Larry Con Smith and Chris Rusko's speed, and here you see it against Larry Con Smith. They play off him, Larry makes a great move, comes back for the football, high in the air. I like the way Larry Con Smith's playing tonight. Nice 13-yard pickup. Leonard Lau is to the far side. Jimmy Collins now is coming for Con Smith. to his receiver, he'll try to run it, and he's short of the first down. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Gain on the play, close to seven yards, however. Good at lift by Warren Jones on the first down. First and 10 from the 34. Good, good. Lee Brennan finally came over to make the tackle out of bounds, but the offensive line gave Warren the time that he needed. People were out there, but the second game for San Diego State that time really covered nicely. Now Chris Roscoe is in the lineup. He is to the left. And Collins to the right. They put double coverage now on Roscoe. Single coverage on Collins, who has yet to catch his first pass of the season. Ball is given up the middle and carrying for the first time tonight. And Cody Fokov, the ball comes free. And they will say that it is third down. It is after the whistle. Fokov's 108th carry of the year came in with 495 yards. He has eight touchdowns so far this year. He carries a 4.6 average. And he comes into this game with a 99-yard average per game. He has a lot of catching up to do here in the second half. Third down and four for the Rambos from their own four. Jones looking to the side of it. Checks off. Now comes to the near side. Now throws. And it is complete to Boom Clutch catch. He got himself open. I mean, he was wide open. I was watching down right there in front of us. They just played off of Clayton. And Warren very literally got out there, pick up 22 yards for Hawaii. But I like the way the offensive line comes through and it has to. He gives him the protection. And then you see Mahukana. You won't see a black jersey around him. He's just going to catch it and try to get the side. And now they converge. But Clayton just found the way to get himself wide open. Clayton's nickname, Boom. B-double-O-N. Collins to the near side. Ball is given to Hikoti for Kava. Kava knights from the 38-yard line of San Diego State inside the 35. Lee Brannan out of Richmond, California, made the stop. Went to El Cerrito High School. Yeah, and he went to Contra Costa Junior College. He's one of those JC transfers. Good player, big guy, 6'4", 245. You can take a look at Fakava's protection that he has on those ribs. And they've got those about as well protected as you can possibly do and let him carry the football at the same time. Second down and five, the ball at the San Diego State 33. Again, Fakava. And he's able to stumble over the 30-yard line to the 29 and very close to the first down. Now, this is really a critical drive for Hawaii as they begin to get near scoring position. Steve Blight, the nose guy, finally made a tackle. But I said 
you know, in some people say, well, that's pretty obvious if they can score first, but I really think in establishing themselves with the 12-point lead, to take the opening kickoff for the second half and get some kind of points on the board, psychologically, real important for both Hawaii, but at the same time, the reverse for San Diego State, because it just gets it a little bit out of reach on them. Third and one. From the 29, ball is given to Stevens, who is covering the game for a Kobe Fakaba, and Billy able to move inside uh, the 28-yard line to the 27. That's enough for a first down. So Lee Brannon, the middle linebacker, again credited for the tackle for the Aztecs. 11.59 left to play in the third quarter. Rainbows led at halftime, 26 to 14. That remains the score here at the Rainbows driving. Roscoe to the left. And Jamie Collins to the right. It is Stevens. Stevens inside the 25-yard line. Stevens down to the 22. Good effort by Billy that time, too. He just kept his feet going, ran nice and low, and just got upfield. Good first down plays. They pick up five right up the middle. Billy Stevens, a senior, six feet, even 210 pounds. Out of Punawana High School on the Big Island of Hawaii. Roscoe to the left, and again Collins to the right. Mahuka and also Junior Lopati are on the wings, and Stephen remains a single setback. It is Stevens to the 20, to the 18-yard line, and close to the first down on second down and five. Good surge by the offensive line. What they're going to do is get San Diego State overplaying to the inside and then just popping on him. Good, good power football right now. That offensive line, and it's gotten nice and cool up here. The wind is not a factor. The flags are laying straight. But it's a real nice, cool San Diego night, and this team is just playing real crisp now. 68 degrees at game time. And the temperature has now dropped to around 61. Again, Stevens. And again, the first down. The Rainbows, very consistent. I mean, they are running Billy Stevens and a Cody Fokava, and they are gaining the yards. and. Getting the first down. I and mean, it's okay to do that, too, when it's working. And they're doing it to pick up the first down. And why not? If your offensive line can hammer like that, and your backs can run it up in there, and you can pick it up, and you can play off of Stevens and Fakaba, I say why not, as they establish the dominance here in the third quarter. First down. Ball at the 14-yard line of San Diego State. Pitch this time to Junior Lopati. And he slips at the 12. And he's trying to cut... He had a little bit of room to the inside. He saw it, too. He saw the lane open up. Nowhere to go on the sideline. Casey Copeland and uh, Lyndon Early were over there. As he tried to cut away from him, Junior just slipped in the grass. Number 34 goes in at one of the wing backs or A backs in the spread offense for the Rainbows. Second down and seven. The ball at the 12. The ball at just outside the 11. Roscoe to the far side and to the near side, Collins. Triple wide receiver now to the left. Jones rolling left, looking for Roscoe. Jones in trouble. Good job that time. Lee Brennan credited with the sack. But a good job by number 26 in the defensive secondary, Kevin Drayton. I think the Rainbows were looking at the same play that they scored the touchdown at the end of the first half. I agree. Warren rolled to his left as he did. And there you see Fakaba trying to block Brennan. Brennan was able to get away, but he was looking downfield, and I think they had everybody covered him. And the Warren had nowhere to go. Brandon finally got into his face. Big play hit. Third down, 15. Ball is now on the 18-yard line. Jones in trouble. He's at the 20. He's at the 15, trying to get outside. And he will give Brown a go out at the 12, and we will see Lee Elam. Jones may be hurt. Uh, Jason Elam, I should say. Jones may be hurt. And it took a little bit of a shot going out of bounds. Jason, two for two in the night, looking real good, even on the PATs. As we said, he looked great at practice last night and in the pregame, kicking real strong. No he just has to deal with the hash mark, that's all. This is a 30-yard field goal angle right from the left. It is a 2 for 9 
graphic there. 43 points a game. Well, they're 102nd in the nation out of only 104 schools. And right here is the local story of the week. We expressed the basic philosophy of how we thought it was essential to win in the conference with a sound defense. That's Fred Miller, who quite frankly has come out and really publicly, as you look at another quote right there, talking about their philosophy and their expectations, has really kind of gone to work on Denny Stoltz. There is an awful lot of pressure and a lot riding on this ball game tonight for this and you, man right there. You very rarely see an athletic director talk that way about his head coach. And there's the quote by Denny Stoltz. They must have had some real interesting meetings behind closed doors. When we opened up saying this was a season of expectations, we meant them of the highest order, and the frustrations are there. Jason Elam kicks off Rowe at the 6. Turns up field at the 20 and gets out to the 25-yard line. First down for San Diego State. This is their first possession of the second half. Rainbow's leading 29 to 14. So Brad Clapps and a quarterback. Kerry Reed Martin goes out. Hubert and Rowe go in. A little bit of pressure on the defense side. They've been out for the half plus seven minutes there over this opening part of the third quarter. They've got to get warm in a hurry. Hewitt. Hewitt to the 29. Gain of four. Second and six. Brian Belcher, number 63, there to make the stop for the Rainbows. Belcher slowly playing his way back onto this football team. He was a pitcher for the Rainbow baseball team. And now midway through the season, in fact, we are at that point, midway through the football season. He is at, in the lineup. Taking a look at the first half possessions from San Diego State. Not really two nice touchdown drives. Other than that, not a whole lot to write about. They just had those two nice drives. Do it again. Do it. That young man is the one responsible for those two drives, both running and passing. Hewitt, last, last year's national leader in touchdowns with 24 in the NCAA, over 1,000 yard rusher. First guy, seven, I think there's only been six other backs in, in San Diego State history to do that, just picked up 20 more yards. He is really a game. First down for the Aztecs, the ball just short of their 49 yard line. Hubert to the near side and roll to the far side. Again, it is Hewitt to midfield and they push him back excuse me not Hewitt but Tommy Booker number 29 who has gone into the game now for San Diego State so again on the play of only about one this for a homecoming crowd very quiet well, they're subdued. I think they've been, you know, they've been stunned pretty much. I think what's also interesting in their schedule, Jim, is that after tonight, San Diego State only plays one more home game against BYU. They're on the road the rest of the season. This crowd is sort of bewildered about what was supposed to be in this football season and hasn't really evolved yet. Fumble, and Booker is able to recover his own fumble at the 50 yard line. So he fumbled on the exchange, but he was able to get it back. On the back to the line of scrimmage, third down and nine. Real important play for this defense. I think the defense has got to come out in this third quarter, and just like the offense, and just stop, but be able to stop their offense, establish themselves. So they've got to stop them in midfield. Hewitt has come back in now to that backfield. Dennis Airy to the near side. Rainbows have five defensive backs in the game. Third down and nine. Flat, short drop, throws. It is complete to Gilbert. Gets away from Trussell. The 30 yard line and out of bounds at the 27. Uh, good play by San Diego State. Excellent pass protection up there. Chris Tevis, I think, was back there in the coverage, but they went to their money man, Monte Gilbert, clutch receiver, hard-working young man, a lot of class. Like this quotes in the papers, a flat throw, and now with some confidence, picks up 22 yards. As Tevis is in pursuit, or actually Tressler, not Tevis. Tress Tevis makes the tackle. They got him open when they needed him. So first and 10 for San Diego State at the Rainbow 27. And now the officials call a timeout with 6.40 left to play in the third period. And the Rainbows leading 29 to 14. Remember that at the conclusion of tonight's game, Rick and I will be selecting the GTE Hawaiian Town Most Valuable Rainbow. Hawaiian Town will present $100 to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Hawaii on the name of the player who went beyond the call. 
So a timeout has been called. I think it's time for some second half heroics here to help us with that decision. <laughs> kind of tough right now the way the game's been going, 29-14 for Hawaii, but just the way it's, it's just sort of come out. It's, um, now the scoreboard, the scoreboard has both teams with still three timeouts. I just wonder what kind of timeout this this is, whether it is an official timeout or whether it has been charged to one of the teams. You see Gilbreth and Stoltz talking on the sideline. It was an official timeout. Maybe the player was injured and it just left him, and we did not see it from up here or, or the clock. 6.45 left. Single setback is here. Gets the call. Turns the corner and is inside the 25 to the 24. Mark Odom held on as he went by. Walking up front by San Diego State. Now they've done a pretty good job here of stopping that Hawaii penetration that we saw early on and Hawaii was able to cope with those interceptions by really rushing the quarterback and also stopping the running plays. Now San Diego State's offensive line doing a good job. 24-yard line of the rainbow. San Diego State second down and seven. It is Hewitt. Hewitt gets by Dana Director. He's able to slide by and get inside the 20 to the 19. Brian Belcher there made sure. Hewitt is very elusive. He has very quick feet. You hear that cliche all the time. But it really applies to Hewitt. And he can slide by, even though he takes the hit. Slides off for more yardage. Been able to advance the ball to the 19. It is third down and two. He's powerful. You can look at those arms down there. He's only 5'9", but he goes a solid 205. Hewitt again. Hewitt hit by Sayomalo, and he may be short of the first down. Big play for Hawaii, if that's the case. Joe over there with his arms up in the air. We'll take a look at where they spotted. That's Odom. Odom uh, had uh, a chance to do some tugging in there. So Sayomalo made the contact. And we will have a field goal attempt now by Tyler Ackerson. Six for nine in field goals. He has hit a 50-yarder. They put the tee down on the 26-yard line. So it is a 36-yard attempt. Angle from the right. Ackerson can kick. It's on its way. And it is good. Four minutes and 48 seconds left in the third period. It is now Rainbow's 29, San Diego State, 17. Potty is deep for the Rainbows in place of Larry Con Smith, which leads to speculation that Con Smith, a little shaken up, he is not in there. He is standing among his teammates. He was trying to put pressure on his uh, either his left leg or his right leg, so he may have been shaken up. At any rate, it is Lopati, Junior Lopati, deep for the Rainbows. Picking off Ackerson, low kick, taken by one of the up men. It is Daniel Ahuna, 20-25. 30, Ahuna breaks out of a bunch at the 30 and is out to the 33. So Ahuna, the brother of Volleyball All-America, Tita Ahuna, the national champion Rainbow Wahine volleyball team. Uh, here you see the kicker slip. That's something you don't see very often. And to his credit, Atkinson still gets it downfield pretty good. The best position on defense was a linebacker position that they were deep. He's got a bunch of guys almost as big as his defensive line playing linebacker, and they're all big guys. How big, you ask me? They are. Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Let me ask you then. How big? Well, he's got three of them playing in there tonight, but basically this linebackers um, are at, uh, you know, 6'2", 240, 6'4", 240, and 6'4", 215, Maury Paul. Those are big, tall guys, rangy. I remind everybody that basketball season tickets on sale for the Rainbow basketball team beginning August 19th to November 10th. And they're available at the University of Hawaii Athletic Ticket Office Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So drive up to the gate and tell the guard that you're just going to purchase season tickets. And it's very interesting what they'll say back to you. Yeah. But we hope that Steve Matsushevitz is okay as they take him off in a wheelchair. You know, we're having a little bit of levity up there, just talking about how the bigness of those guys. But we certainly hope that Steve is okay. So unfortunately, we won't see any player get hurt. This may be a better way to take a player off the field, but it's certainly not. It would, it 
right. That's rather, I guess that, that takes away the the bigness of a player when he's wheeled off. Usually you see his teammates come out and help him. Yeah, I just hate to see knee injuries, though. That's true. Oh, what a hit by Stevens. Able to leap into the secondary. But it was helmet upon chin strap that time. Uh, Lee just, Branham able to have the leverage. And to Billy's credit, he bounced right back up and you could see him clapping. But you know, but anytime you go up and over the top like that, you see he's hurling one of his players. Billy normally can run up inside low, but when he hurdles like that, he's up, they just get the shot. And those guys just come over and take it over on him. Roscoe to the far side, picked up by Drayton. That is given on a reverse. This is Con Smith. He was not in there on the kickoff. He's in there now. And he's tripped up. He may have been gone. I think he's gone if Tony Nettles, the cornerback, doesn't trip him up. Number 19 downfield. That play opened up beautifully. The ball is really what a surprise play. You have a great look at it on the replay here. You see Wong on the off now, a little toss back, but what really makes the play go, and it's classic in any football play, is the blocking. And he's got a wall out there on both sides, inside and out. And right there, or right here rather, Nettles coming over. If he doesn't do that, it's he's gone. gone. He's gone. gone. 20 yard game. First down for the Rainbows on the 44 yard line of San Diego State. Jones in trouble. And down he goes on the line of scrimmage. They're really crunching. Pio Sanga Polotelli out of Honolulu and Marino High School. Pio, an interesting story. He sat out last season because of academics. He was one of those Proposition 48 players. But give him credit. He came back this year without practicing with the team, and he has been able to get into the starting lineup. Played football for Pac-5, played basketball for Marino. He's a good athlete, too. He's real, real quick for a big guy. Second down and 10 for the Rainbows from the San Diego State 44. Jones to throw. is Mahuka, a sliding catch at the 30-yard line, and that's the same pattern Mahuka was open on before. Well, Clayton's having a good night. You know, there's a lot of concern. Dave McArthur getting hurt has been playing well, and as we said, Clayton has spelled real well, but, you know, how are we doing the starting role? I think he's done just beautifully. He gets himself open again, sitting down, but he kicks up 14 yards in the first down and keeps the drive going. Chris Gaskell, number 88, and at wide receiver, he comes out to the near side, Leonard Lau, 85, to the far side. remains as the single setback. It is Stevens with the ball. And Stevens down to the 26 with 2.52 left to play in the third period. Oh, no Lee Brennan nice. there to make the stop for San Diego State. So another nice tackle by Lee Brennan in that middle linebacker position stepping up in there. But Billy Stevens having a good time down there. He's feeling good. A lot of carries for him. It's the most action he's seen in one ball game all year. And he's responding to it. to the left and to the right again, Gaskell. Davis and Mahuka on the wing. Kept this time by Jones. He sent. May have fumbled the ball. San Diego State has it. No one blocked on the back side. So many times that's where you see it. Cy New, the linebacker, came on a blitz. On the back side, nobody picked him up. And Warren just took the shot right in the back and the ball coughed up. You can see it right here. Nobody on Neo as he comes in there. Warren just starting to get his arm up there, and the ball comes out. And that stalls what looked like to be a very good drive. Neo, rather, not Neo. Neo. See you from Oceanside, California. Sign Neo. And a first down for San Diego State at their own 29 yard line. Another turnover. Big Rob Graff had the fumble. Recovery. Hewitt, the tailback. Reed Martin, Harry Reed Martin. Well, you know, the defense has got to turn on here. They opened up and they played real well and they had the interceptions, but they've really got to turn on now in the second half. New Juan O'Callia at that time out there in the flat making the tackle, but I think the defense has got to establish its presence in the small game. We've been hit, sitting here waiting for and having expectations for the offense, but I think the defense is capable here in the second half of taking charge. Second down at seven, the ball just short of the 33. San Diego State, high formation, right over the five-man front. Again, Reed Martin, hit by Maeva, and lunges forward for the first down marker, just short. 133 left to play in the third period. Terry Reed Martin being really used tonight by Dennis Stokes. 
we said, high expectations for him. He's on the front cover of their press guy. They expected he had the great year. And with Alfred Jackson, their great wide receiver out, they've gone to Reed Martin tonight, and he's been effective. Rainbows lead 29 to 17. San Diego State trying to put a consistent drive here in the final moments of the third period. Ball is given to the fullback, Jennings. And Jennings to the 40. That should be enough for the first down. David Maeva. And then again on the stop. Maeva out of Kamehameha High School. Good physical matchup that time. David Maeva, 6 feet, 200 pounds, taking on 4, 250. David showing lots of courage as he just came up inside. That's his 28th unassisted tackle of the year. Row to the far side. Side of inside of row is Gilbert. Not looking. Gilbert, complete. Tries to spin his way. Good game on the play. Close to 8 yards. Second down and two. 39 seconds left to play, third period. Mike Chessler there, making the stop. Good short passing game. They've done it nicely with the de delays and the little hitch patterns and curl-ins. They take a little Marty Gilbert. He's got four catches on the night for 52 yards. He has been probably the steadiest player all year. Despite the frustrating season they've had, Gilbert has been a shining star. Number 16, Dennis Arian, a wide receiver to the far side. So the near side is Rowe. And Hewitt, the tailback, gets the call. Hewitt is hit by Robertson, short of the first down at midfield. That is the last play of the third period. Good penetration by Directo. He helped set that up. Redbugs take a 12-point lead into the fourth quarter. Again, the fourth quarter, 29 to 17, the Rainbows of Hawaii over San Diego State. Paul Hewitt of San Diego State, 20 carries now, over 100 yards, 107 yards, and he has thrown one touchdown pass, 32 yarder in the first half. Third down, less than a yard for the first down as we begin the final quarter of play. Reed Martin doing a dance. Ball is given to Hewitt, he's hit in the backfield, and a four yard loss. Standard director that gets in there in a flash, or was it Mike Tressler on a blitz? I see 37 getting up, and say Malo, the two of them, you know, in every great defensive play, the name of the game is penetration, and there you saw it. We'll take a look at it. Say Malo just gets in there in a hurry. Right there, he just takes the trapping guard, stuffs him, and stuffs Hewitt, and Mike Tressler comes up to support as well. Excellent football play by Hawaii, and they stop the third down conversion attempt. Joe Sato sent a punt now for San Diego State. Excellent defensive play by the Rainbows. Breaks his team. Walter will let it bounce. Takes a San Diego bounce inside the 20. And they down it on the 19. First down for the Rainbows at that point. That was a take charge defensive play right there. 35-yard punt, no return. 14-19 left to play in the fourth quarter. We'll be back at Jack Murphy after this. 29-17, Rainbows have their hands on the wall for the first time here in the fourth quarter. And Cody Fakava is the single running back for the Rainbows. First down for the Bulls, and they have it at the 18. First and 10 from their own 18-yard line. Warren Jones looks over a four-man front for San Diego State. Keeps it and gets out over the 20 to the 22. Able to turn it upfield. Pio signs up for the made the stop. For the Aztecs. A gain on the play from the 18 out to the 22. Con Smith is wide to the right. Chris Roscoe is to the left. Ball is given to Hikoti Fukaba, the 30-yard line, and that's enough for the first down. It's also a good-looking run by uh, Hikoti as uh, Sai Niu made the tackle downfield. Interesting point to ponder here in the second half. The rainbow game plan in the second half, not exactly the same as it was in the first half. Rainbows want to stick on the ground and use that clock. They want it to tick. Yeah, so much for our, our uh, assessment at the half about opening up with the passing attack in the second half. We've not seen it. They're committed to the run. First down at the 30-yard line. Ball is kept by Jones. He's in trouble. And they wind him down back at the 25-yard line. So Wesselman 
comes in and makes the stop for San Diego State. Wesselman, tough play. He's been all over the place He's tonight. played a magnificent game for San Diego State. Well, that's the guy that's got to get sealed there if Warren's going to be able to turn the corner. We talked about it earlier. They've got to be able to block the linebacker scraping down. That time, Wesselman just got himself upfield. Nice play. Second and 14 from their own 26-yard line. Jones straight back this time. Steps up. for the moment, but Brandon was able to close it off and lock him down, Lee Brandon. Well, Lee Brandon's playing one heck of a game, so along with Sandra Colatelli, a couple of those guys out there, Wesselman, linebackers all over the place. That time, you're right, Jim, it really opened up for Warren. Looked like he was going to get way upfield, and suddenly, Brandon came off his block and was up there making the tackle. Good shot of Lee Brandon right there. Rather intense young man. He may be arguing with the defensive signal. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't like what he has been given. But you see linebackers wearing 88, too. That's kind of a different number. Triple wide receiver. Two to one. Jones, look at it. Now lays it off for Hikori Fakata. 35, short of the first down. And the Rainbows will have to punt it away. Nice tackle in the open field by Casey Copeland. He came over there, was just one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, Cody had a full head of steam. You can see a little smile. And little Copeland, he's not the biggest guy out there, just came up. At six feet, 185 pounds, and just leveled to Hake Hogan in the open field. 11.52 left to play in the game, and Kyle Alu has come in to punt for the Rainbows. Monty Gilbert is deep for San Diego State. Now, the long snapper on the punts is Augie Apelo. Now, this is key right here. Now, the boys have got to retain good field position. Now, Lou makes a good punt, and they have to cover real well. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for San Diego State. Waiting for the snap from center. Low snap, feels it, gets the punt away. Off the side of his foot, a spiral. Takes a rainbow bounce inside the 30. Fielded there by Gilbert, and he's out to the 35. Well, actually, that whole thing went a little bit in the favor of San Diego State, because it was only a 34-yard punt, and they picked up a 7-yard return. You got a net of 27 yards. Robert Land made the tackle. 11.34 left, right fourth here. quarter. San Diego State will have the ball. First down and 10 at their own 35. They trail in this game 29 to 17. So crucial, crucial drive beginning here for San Diego State. They come out and split backs. Drop straight back. Chased out of the pocket. Now throws. It is complete to run and at the 45 of the Rainbows. And he is down inside the 40 at the Rainbow 39. That was a different look by San Diego State. Well, it was a different look in a number of different ways. And this young man right here, Mr. Platt, Brad Platt, the quarterback, does a great job of escaping, getting sacked, and then runs away and finds the open receiver. Finally hits Ron Slack upfield, who catches the ball, and they get a 27-yard gain before Briggs and Tressler make the stop. So big play for San Diego State coming back like that. Gilbert is to the left. And a roll to the right. Roll picked up by Colson. Pitch to number 29. And carrying the ball for San Diego State is Tommy Booker. Rainbow's able to wall him off, however. Good tackle by Mark Odom. Came over. They really stretched that over nicely, and Odom slanted upfield and just made the tackle. Good job, Mark Odom, right there. Defense has got to make something happen here, James. They can't let San Diego State, with 10.50 to go in this game, get any kind of scoring. Now Slack comes back in and Jennings goes out, so we should see another look by San Diego State. Slack is the fullback, but he can come out of that backfield. Booker, the tailback behind him, number 29. They shift out of the eye. Back to pass. Flat. He is hit. The ball is free. The red goes have it. They lose it. Slack is there and is still free. San Diego State, Hawaii, San Diego State out of bounds. Well, what a know. loss. I was just going to say, I don't know what's bad, better for Hawaii. Tough break for San Diego State. I can't remember the last time I saw a ball go back about 30 yards like that, but it certainly did on that play. Tough for Hawaii that they don't actually come up with a recovery. As you're watching it, this is one of those things that they end up making a film of. They want to, you want to see bloopers. Great effort there to get them to cough up the ball by Gavin Robinson. They lose 35 yards. It looks like Augie's going to get it. He rolls when it doesn't get it. Robinson comes back in. He doesn't get it. Directo's there. Lands there, but the ball gets out of bounds. 
Boy, I tell you, what a play. 35-yard loss on that fumble all the way back to the 29-yard line. It is third down and 43. Double wide receiver to the left. Back to pass. Clutch. Goes over the middle. Bad attack. So when you talk about take charge defense, last two plays, excellent. Fans booing, but I tell you, I would credit Hawaii's defense rather than the aptness of the offense. They just came with a lot of pressure, realizing what's on the line with 10-18 left. They needed to make it happen, and now the ball should end up with good field position. Strange things happen in the whack. Yeah, strange things every time you play this game. I'll tell you, it's wild. Joe Santos in to do the punting for San Diego State. And Walter Briggs, deep. Santos just gets it away. And that ball will bounce inside the 40. Take the San Diego State bounce inside the 35. And is down to the 32. So, 10-06 to play in the game. When we come back, the Rainbows will have it. And they lead 29-17. Talking to his defensive unit. Also a very intelligent young man. And there's a guy right now beginning to bite his his, his lip as the clock becomes a factor with 10.06 left. But going back to Ellison and that shot you saw of Augie Apelli and those guys, that last series had to give him the kind of uplift that that defense has been looking for here in the second half. Came at the right time, and I think it was beautifully executed. Now if the offense can make something happen for Hawaii, they can take charge and take this one home. First down for the Rainbows. Ball at the 33-yard line. Jones keeps looking for Roscoe. Throwing deep for Roscoe. Got it away. Oh, nice play. Was it Drayton, I think? Drayton. I think it was Dr Yep, Drayton comes over there. Nice play. Defensive play because Chris was open. And Warren, to his credit, he gets protection. He throws a nice ball. This is just good defense. Right here. Roscoe's open. Drayton just goes for it. You know, if he misses it, Roscoe's got a touchdown. But Kevin comes up there with the big, the big bat, big tap away, big tip. Roscoe comes to the near side, slotted. Inside of Roscoe is Mahuka. Roscoe again picked up by Drayton. Second down and ten for the 33. Rowan is the quarterback. Jones to Roscoe, complete at the 45. Well, the Rainbows come right back. Hey, hey, I think must have a little monitor down there. They must be listening to us when we talked about that passing game. with two straight passing plays. Chris Roscoe getting up a little bit limp here, but I like the way Warren's throwing the last two. He should be two for two, but he's one for one, but he picks up a big first down. Good protection, good zip, and Chris gets open on the out pattern. 9.46 left to play in the game. Gaskell has gone in for Roscoe. He is to the far side. To the near side is Leonard Lau. First down for the Rainbows at their own 47-yard line. Ball is given to Stevens. And Billy out to midfield. Well, I like, on the play of about three. I like the last couple play calls, Jim. Jim. Then coming back with the run is okay because they just didn't want to get too conservative. All points, too shaky elite to sit on. Now I think they got that defense wondering out there, and that's what you want to do. Rainbows with the ball. Smack it midfield. Second down and seven. Jones again to Stevens. Good power running by Billy Stevens to the 45-yard line. John Wesselman. There to make the tackle for San Diego State. Third down for the Rainbows, and more importantly, the clock continually running. 8.40 left to play in the game. They just flashed tonight's attendance at 27,142. Slightly larger than what they had anticipated. They expected only 25, so fans here kind of really hoping for something. Again, it is Stevens. Stevens inside the 40. That is enough for a first down. Let's take charge football now on both sides of the ball. Good surge by the offensive line. Stevens ran up in there with some authority. We have a player that might be Mark Nua. That is. So Mark Nua is down. Also a San Diego State player. Yeah. Having trouble. Lori Paul. Up. That's Maury Paul. You're right. The other linebacker. The hope that Mark's okay and Maury Paul. As we take a look at Billy Stevens now, 22 rushes, 94 yards. He really hit that last one up in there really tough. Jesse, 
It's like watching a fight where two guys knocked each other out at the same time. First time we've seen Markdown all year. We really hope he's okay. And it could be his ankle. Mark Noor is truly an entertaining young man just to talk to. He's good. from New Zealand. He's from a different culture. He grew up playing a different sport. And he's angry. And he's he was standing out in front of the Stars and Stripes, which is sort of docked outside of our hotel over here in the harbor. You're talking about the catamaran that the just cat won the America's Cup. Yeah. And we have to hope he's okay. I don't like this. They're going to signal for an air sprint or some guys to help him carry him off. But uh, he, he just kidding with him. He was. He, he was, wanted to blow it up. Yeah, right? He was a very entertaining guy. Don't forget, next week, October 22nd, the big game, Hawaii versus BYU. 5.30 this time. Going to be seen live. It's already sold out exclusively on KHNL Channel 13, my favorite television station. I hope yours as you look on, and I hope you're watching next Saturday night. So the big guy being helped off here and concern for Mark Noor. Right now, that's kind of a good sign he's looking off there. We take a look at it on the replay, and you can see what's happened there is a pile of humanity falling on the right, oh, underneath his leg. You got one guy sort of kind of look like Steve Blythe, and Steve's a big guy, about 6'1", 260, just taking out Mark's leg from under him. First down for the Rainbows on the 38-yard line of San Diego State. Again, Billy Stevens carries. He runs into John Wesselman, but the clock starts up again for the Rainbows. What the, what the Rainbows have done is that they've They've just taken the start, taken the steam out of San Diego State here in the second half. And they've just played very consistent football. Yep, pretty high nose, too, though, with the way the running plays are going. The offensive line, good surge. They just want to control the game. That's what they're moving towards. Second down and seven. Again, Billy Stevens, he gets roughed up, still on his feet. They stop short of the 30-yard line at about the 32. That will bring up third down. See, I like Billy Stevens. You know... He's not the fastest guy in the world. Sanga Polotelli had to wrestle to bring him down. But the thing I like about Billy, and I've always liked it from the first time we've seen him play, is he just keeps coming at you. You very seldom see him go down with one hit. He's just one of those kind of guys that his legs don't stop moving. As he hits the 100-yard mark, congratulations to Billy Stevens. 24 rushes. I think he's answering the call. That's the first time that he has gone over 100 yards in his rainbow career. Yeah, and with Fakaba out tonight, he stepped in and filled some big shoes, and he's done it nicely. Third down, looking for a sideline pass. Jones throws. It is incomplete. Wide of Roscoe. That was a third down play, too, here. I think we'll see Jason Elam as they went to go for the quick out pad and just over the stakes. Tony Nettles on the good coverage. That will be fourth down. Warren Jones has come to the side, and the field goal team will go on. Lemoy Tua, the long snapper going in. Wide hands in. Amani Davis. Jason Elam. Three field goals tonight, 35, 34, and 30. And about to try a 48-yarder. His longest has been 47. So this will be his longest field goal of the year. And he is kicking it straight on, waiting for the snap. Alou has it down. There's the kick. It has the distance. It is caught. 48-yard field goal, Jason Elam. And the Rainbows take another three. That's four field goals by Elam. And he contributes his longest of the season, 32-17, Hawaii. Take a look at the reaction now by Jason Elam. Four field goals tonight, carefully placed down by Alou. And Elam knows, look at Alou. That, that, that says it all. It's I want, there. I want to say one other thing about that field goal for the benefit of people who didn't see it go through the uprights. He had about 10 to 15 yards to spare in that thing. That thing just kept going. I mean, it was a shot. 32 to 17, four field goals tonight by Jason Elam, 12 points. Elam kicking off. It is Rowe at the seven. Rainbow's lead at 30. Two to 17. Now you would expect that San Diego State here with uh, 6.46 to go in the game is going to want to put the ball up. And that being the case, you would suspect that Rich Allison is going to have his defense tee off. We will see. Let's see what kind of pressure they can put on that young man right there, Brad Platt. The time, 6.46 left to play. Slack and Hewitt split backs. 
back to throw. Complete to Huffles. It is complete to Reed Martin. Out over the 30 at the 33-yard line. Pretty good coverage that time. Reed Martin got himself open on a delay. Having an out pad, and Briggs finally came up and made the tackle. I think Walter, at the last second, was trying to decide whether or not to go for an interception or make the tackle. Pratt has to pump fake. Good coverage back there. Finally, Kerry Reed Martin gets himself open. I don't think he was thinking about interception too much, just a tackle. When I first looked at it, it looked like he was almost trying to play the ball. Gain of five, second down and five now for San Diego State. Again, flat to throw. Looks for slack. Now throws for slack. Complete at the 38. He doubles back, breaks a tackle, and gets the first down. Out to the 42-yard line. That stops the clock with 6.04 left to play in the game. Well, they'll pick up the first down. Tanavasa made the tackle that time. Some pretty good intensity out there, only they missed on that tackle, but you can see the players kind of inspired here. I don't suspect that Hawaii's going to let up in the least. Double wide receiver now to the right for San Diego State. First and 10 from their own 42. Sideline pattern complete to Gilbert. 50, 45, 40, and is wrestled down there. Monty Gilbert showing how quick he is. Chris Devis makes the stop. Uh, you just have to like Gilbert right here. He's real heady. 19-yard pickup. Devis makes a tackle. Now Platt just throws the ball, but Gilbert's on the sideline. You can see him. He gets away from Mark Odom. Just good feet. Tevis, pretty short tackle. was able to get him out of bounds, but not before he picked up 19 yards. So first and 10 again for San Diego State. Throw to the near side. Platt throws. Complete the slack out of the backfield. Breaks a tackle at the 30 and is down to the 26. That's enough for a first down for San Diego State. And they are moving the ball well now through the air behind the passing of Platt. Gavin Robertson there to make the stop for the rainbow. Well, they just come out and all they've done is winging it from the uh, timeout and he, uh, getting the time. The offensive line, real key here is they give him the protection. Brad Platt to throw the football. Well, just outside the 25 yard line, Gilbert to the far side, Airy to the near side and slotted inside of Airy is wrong. Gilbert, one-on-one -on -one with Tevis. Gilbert breaks the tackle, but they say he stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Another first down. Well, you've got to make those kinds of decisions out there. Now, Tevis, early on tonight, had a fill-in for Danny Lewis, who's been filling in for Kim McLeod. Going to be challenged late in the game. They've gone to work on Chris. I think he's playing well out there. But Gilbert, a very capable, experienced receiver, a lot, a lot to cover out there in the flat. First down again for San Diego State. The Hawaii fans here at Jack Murphy start to chant defense. Flat, short drop, goes up in the middle of the side. At the 10, at the 5, at the 4 yard line. 5-12 left to play, and San Diego State expertly has moved up against the rainbow defense and a rather porous defense. Short drops, short passes, but it's what the receivers have done after they have been able to get the ball. They've broken tackles, gone for good yardage. Yep, there's been some broken tackles, missed tackles as well, and they've always picked up a few extra. I like the way Platt is thrown with confidence. This whole series, he's just putting the ball right on the money. San Diego State goes back to the I formation now at the four. They give it to Jennings. He set it to three. And the Rainbows are able to wedge him to the turf. Mark Odom there. Along with Walter Briggs flying up from the secondary. San Diego State with all three timeouts remaining. They're not into that, that time period where they'd be using them, but a running play like that just works to, their, to Hawaii's advantage. I don't know why the clock is stopped right now. Official timeout for some reason. They're going to measure. Okay. 4.36 left to play in the game. The Rainbows led at halftime 26 to 14. Both teams exchanged field goals in the third quarter. And the Rainbows on a 48-yard field goal by Jason Elam. In the fourth quarter, 32 to 17 now the score, but San Diego State very close to scoring themselves. In this game, with 4.36 left, anything can happen. You have a conference like the WAC in which touchdowns are scored in bunches. It is not over. I agree. That can happen. Surprising drive. I did not think the defense would let San Diego State do this to them, but to the credit of San Diego State, those guys out there making it happen. They've marched down the field with a lot of authority on this drive. Third down, about a yard to go for a first down. They come out and double tight end. Hewitt fumbles the ball. He may have gotten it back. Now the rainbow's pointing the other way. And it 
will be fourth down. It will be fourth down. Well, big fourth down play here, needless to say. I believe it, he at least juggled it. Yeah, I think he, he juggled it in front of the gym, but it also stopped the clock. The seven is just a Now they started. He did fumble it. And Hawaii, take a time, Hawaii took a timeout. So, timeout has been called. I believe the timeout has been called by uh, by San Diego State uh, instead of the Rangers. Well, okay, I'm Let's sorry. Take a look at the, at the big pile there. Is that brings up an, an interesting dilemma, so to speak, for Denny Stoltz. A field goal will do him no good. A first down, would you go for the first down here, or would you try for it all? I think you're going to try... Uh, it's hard to only go for the first down here, okay? You you looking at me like I have some kind of offensive wizard here? Well, it's, it just so, seems to be an interesting right, Okay, I'll tell you. Go for it all, all okay? Right. You're going to play winning football. I got 421. You got the ball out there in the six-yard line. The play ought to be designed to pick you up the six and get you the six points. Perhaps what Denny Stoltz, knowing the kind of coach that he is, he will give Platt some options. If this happens, you do this. If this is if this is open, you go for the touchdown. But if that is not open and you have a chance for the first down, this is what you do. I believe that's what he's telling Platt. Yeah. Well, that, that makes sense to me. It sounds like a lot. It sounds like a politician on that one, but uh, I'll go along with it. You know, it's amazing hey, to me. It's amazing to me how much respect your former players have for you. I mean, we walked into Jack Murphy today, the former players that live in the San Diego area, former players from the University of Hawaii, they, they really like you. What's so amazing about well, that? It just proves that time heals all wounds. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth down for San Diego State. Back to pass. safety blitz from the back side he ran away from Trussell who was chasing him Kerry Reed Martin catches the ball I think in triple coverage Jim I mean there were guys all over him and Platt drilled it in he just stole the football away from the defense I mean he just gripped it he gripped the football he said oh, yeah, I it have Tev it it was Tevis not not Tressler Tevis from behind he gets away he gets away from Robertson he throws it now Reed Martin there there's only two jerseys he just steals the ball over Tressler and Briggs great effort it is now 32 to 23 in favor of the Rainbows. Another angle on it. What a catch by Reed Martin. That is the first touchdown catch of the year by Reed Martin. It is only the second touchdown pass being thrown, uh, being thrown by the quarterback. And this Platt. game, this game is far from over. But even if San Diego State should lose tonight, one of the bright spots coming out of here is, I think, at least has been the player Kerry Reed Martin. Yeah, Monty Gilbert's played consistently, but Hewitt's return, he's run real well. And this kid, Kerry Reed Martin, tonight had a good night for him, I think. And the night is not over. Four minutes and 13 seconds left. 32 to 23 in favor of the Rainbows. Kerry Reed Martin looking up on the big diamond vision here at the Jack right. Murphy Stadium. You know, that's a, that's amazing, that big, that big screen that has in-stadium replays for the people that come here, especially on the touchdown throws and uh, a player can score the touchdown then run out from under the end zone look up at the scoreboard and enjoy it all again well yeah but he better be real subtle about how he does that or he's going to have a coach taking a fit on the sidelines you know i mean that's the kind of grandstanding of the highest order well james with 413 left in the fourth quarter we have got ourselves some drama to this football game we have we have and it may be more drama than the Rainbows would like to experience at this time. Now I turn to you and I say, is uh, San Diego State going to go for two or one? I think they have to go for two. I think you're right. Okay. Big play if Hawaii can stop them right here. Because they get it nine points away. So a touchdown's not good enough. This two-point conversion game could be on the line right here. I was impressed by the way San Diego State went up the field that time. Oh, short pattern. Short patterns. I think that's what you'll see down here. Some kind of play action short type of pattern. Of course, you know, it's going to be short pattern because you're on the three-yard line, but, I mean, that real quick hitting type of thing. I tell you, I think it's the cool air that's getting to me. Big play for Hawaii right here. Gilbreth and Rowe are flanked to the left side. Platt throws into the end zone. Rowe, does he have it? No, they say he did not have possession. Rowe is unbelievably incensed. Whoa, what a play. Briggs, I think, was in the coverage of Tevis. I'm not sure. It was so far away in that corner. I think it was 35 Tevis. We'll take a look at it. This is a Platt now. He's going to throw the ball over the blitz. 
He gets it back there. Tevis is there. Rowe is high in the air. He comes down with the ball. Does, Does he, he have, have possession? possession? That's the question. We can't see from this angle. People on Diamond Vision are booing in the stadium because they had the same view we did as we're feeding that particular camera here. Maybe perhaps another look at it. You see Tevis getting into Platt. To Platt's credit, he catches it. I think it's a great break for Hawaii, Jim, because now the margin is still nine, and even a touchdown and two is not enough with 4.13 left. It was tough to tell whether he had possession from the angle that we had according to the replay. He may very well have had possession, which means that he had a case. When he jumped up at the official, that's very close to unsportsmanlike conduct, especially in the NCAA. Yeah, Stoltz is livid. He's on the side. You can't play him. We went into this game saying how much was on the line, no question about it. And right there on a play like that on your home field, tough to accept. Again, we didn't have the best angle on it. So San Diego State will kick off. This has not been a good day for two-point conversions. That's true. I've seen 0 for 4 today. <laughs> two in this game and two earlier. Depending on who you're cheering for. 32-23. And the Rainbows setting up for what could be an onside kick. Jamie uh, Collins is deep for the Rainbows, but the Rainbows have their, their hands people, their catchers, and their skilled people. Only 10 yards from the ball, and then a reinforced line behind that. But do they have their quarterback out there? Did you see Lou Holtz put Tony Rice out there today in the onside kick? Incredible. Ackerman kicks it deep. Jamie Collins comes up, feels it at the 10-yard line. The sideline to the 20. Twist it down there. Perhaps, and this will sound controversial, but maybe perhaps a little bit of athletic justice taking place right here. Again, we never really saw whether Rowe had possession or not, but on this one here, Jamie Collins does not end up with the football. Somebody gets a hand in there. Great stripping as they punch the ball out. Kevin Drayton, again, 26. The man causing the fumble. And always comes up with the fumble recovery. They're still not in the end zone. The ball's on the 16. But that's a breaks the same. Much time right. remaining. 408. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Here comes San Diego State. It's a matter of poise here for Hawaii. They can't buckle. Gilbert to the far side, being picked up by Tevis. Pat looking right, throwing right, complete the slack at the 15. And he's rolled out immediately by Mike Tressler. Good job by Tressler. Remember now Hawaii's played tough defense in the past of this year earlier here. Now they realize what, what they're up against. As the Rainbows, clock ticks. Rainbows lead by nine. A touchdown and a two-point conversion. Let's just say a two-point conversion can pull San Diego State within one. A touchdown and a, and a regular extra point pulls them within two. And then the field goal can win it. Starting to a tough situation tonight. He has a very good relief. He went into Danny Lewis, and the young freshman is worked against one of the best receivers in the WAC. In fact, an all-WAC performer, Marty Gilbert. And that time against man-on-man -man coverage, Gilbert just had too much for the young freshman. 3:29 left, and the Aztecs now right back in this game, 32 to 29. Ackerson in to try the extra point. So the turnover by Collins. And the play by Tevis, just too much cushion on Gilbert. And San Diego State now has closed to within three. Ackerson trying to make it to within two. And he's scored the board, look at the scoreboard. Hawaii 32, San Diego State 30. And now the onside kick. Three minutes and 29 seconds left to play. 32 for the Rainbows, 30 for the Aztecs. And it has really turned around now for San Diego State. Rainbows again with two rows of players up close. Ackerson will try the kick. Deep down for the Rainbows, a junior Lopati. Ackerson misses the ball. 
Ball fell down. Ball fell down, all right. With no wind. You know, he had it kind of placed in a rather uh, odd position on the seat. I said to myself, what a fake. Yeah. God. I tell you, San Diego State beginning to find their identity here in this ball game with 329 left. They've made some big things happen here. Yeah, Rose have left them right back in it. A cut at San Diego State's play. They've been able to take what the Rainbows have given them. And they have been able to make this a very close game. Kicks it deep. Back it up inside the five. Junior Lopati to the 10, 15, 20, 24 yard line, first down Rainbows. Three minutes and 23 seconds left to play. And now it is the Rainbow offense who must establish themselves here. The Rainbow offense must keep the ball for three minutes, 23 seconds, and do something with it. And there's Flat. That is his yes. second touchdown pass of this, of this game, third touchdown pass of the year. And for Gilbert, that is his second touchdown reception. Yeah, and there you can see how quickly it can happen. Good news for Hawaii fans, Mark Newell back in the lineup as the offense needs to make something happen. First down for the 24. Quickly, Billy Stevens bursts into the secondary. Out to the 30-yard line. It'll be second down and five for the Rainbows. And Stevens running with pure emotion now. Well, I like it. I've been saying it. We were real happy for him tonight. He's having a great game. He almost broke that one. He was upset when he came up because he had a full field in front of him and somehow just got his feet tangled up. 2.56 left. Both teams with two timeouts. Jones may be changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Single setback, Billy Stevens. Showing blitz, San Diego State. They do not. Ball is given to Stevens. Stevens to the 34. Maybe short of the first down. He'll be sure. Maybe just short. But not by much. Good effort by that offensive line and especially Billy Stevens. But credit Billy Stevens. What, what a time for a player to come on. Billy Stevens saying to himself, that let the burden fall to me. That's a very special player that says that. Let me carry the ball. Give me the ball in these very crucial seconds, and I'll show you what I can do. That's right. Did he have enough for the first down? It's going to be real close. It is inches short. It is inches short. And that will bring a third down for the Rainbows now with two minutes and 35 seconds left to play. You can see the concern of Bob Whitehead. He has seen this game, which was under control, become a real nail-biter. Third down, Billy Stevens, a single setback, third and inches. Stevens, first down. Well, Stevens to the 36, and the clock stopped for the moment. They will move the chains, two minutes and 26 seconds left. That's just good hard-nosed football up in there right now. Lee Brandon stepped up about as tough as you want a linebacker to do so to take Stevens on. And somehow the young man right there just had the determination to get up and over. Good offensive line search, but you see Brandon right on him, but Stevens wouldn't go down. I mean, Brandon filled that hole as well as you would like a linebacker to do it. Credit Stevens, he picked up the first down. Two minutes and 12 seconds left. First down for the Rainbows on their own 36. They lead in this game 32 to 30. Wide receivers left and right. Again, Stevens. Stevens to the 38 yard line. We're clock now under two minutes. 155. Well, they're going to stop it right there for some reason. Lee Brennan once again with the tackle. And one of the San Diego State players is down. San Diego, State, scary triplet. San Diego State not wanting to use a timeout on defense would like somehow, some way to... But they take a timeout. They did take a timeout. San Diego State took a timeout. That stops the clock with one minute and 55 seconds left. You know, it, it was interesting to note that Billy Stevens coming into this game, Stevens entered the game with 27 carries for only 87 yards. And the consensus was, in fact, my consensus was, that the Rainbows would lessen as far as their ground game is concerned because after all, he, Koji Fakava was such a very tenacious runner that Billy Stevens was used sparingly in the Rainbow offense, even when Koji Fakava was injured. Yeah. But well, tonight, I Stevens 
you remember Mr. Moore, this is a game to remember for Billy. 28 carries, 114 yards. You remember my saying early on in the first quarter, if if Billy Stevens can have the game, he has been delivering it for him. He's been doing it with great style and great heart. Triple wide receiver now to the right. Second down and eight. Again, Stevens. Stevens really takes a beating as he first into the San Diego State secondary. Out to the 43 yard line. 147 left. And San Diego State takes their final timeouts. The Rainbows. That will bring up a big third down play. Rainbows are one first down away from taking this game home to Hawaii with a victory. With no, with no timeouts left in a minute 47, if they can convert and make a first down, they'll be able to control it all the way out to the end of the game. The Aztecs have put people back in the seats. People were starting to leave here at the start of the fourth quarter, midway through the fourth quarter. But the Aztecs now, there's no one leaving. No, but there aren't that many people in here. As you look at it, they're kind of sort of spread around. I always say that in that we're in a professional league football stadium with 54,000 capacity, and it's almost a non-crowd, if you will, by comparison to when it starts rocking like it would at Aloha Stadium if Hawaii had the ball and play home in this kind of circumstance. So I don't think the crowd is much of a factor on their own behalf. But the ones who are here are loud. Are here. I agree, they are. I mean, they're not leaving. They, no. They, I, even I, with four minutes left, when we said, in the whack, you can never, you can never really leave. You have to spend the ticket the whole time. I agree. Third and four. Big third and four. Big third and four play right here. Third down and four for the Rainbows. We'll let you watch. Short. He's short. I'm not so sure. There might not have been a, a, a mess up on that play or something because Mahuka came back, started going motion, and just sort of stood there and froze so he wouldn't be. Uh, it, I think there might be a little bit of confusion. I'm not sure. Now, the Rainbows have a decision to make. It is fourth down at a yard. Fourth and one. Jones comes over to the side. And Bob Wagner will talk to his assistants. Well, I think the strategy says you kick it away here because you don't want to get them in field goal range. And the way Platt has had the ball in the last two drives, they've moved very well. Team wants to go for it. Billy Stevens wants to go for it. Well, there's a minute four left. You kick it away, you get them down deep, you force the defense. And that, that has been taken out now because a, 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 a delay of game penalty has been called on the Rainbows. Okay, they let the clock go. I think you kick it, you have to. Kyle Luke comes into the game. Time for Kyle Lou to get the big punt. I, I think that that's what they were thinking all along. Despite the players looking like they wanted to go for it, you kick it away and you force this team to move on you. And you're hoping your defense can hold with a minute and four left. Ten men on the line of scrimmage now for San Diego State. Waiting for the snap from center. He had to field the last one on the hunt. This one a little bit off to the left. He just gets it away. Galbraith comes up. Takes it on the run at the 26 yard line. Galbraith trying to get it out of bounds. He does. Stops the clock. 55 seconds left. All San Diego State needs is a field goal. The longest field goal of this season by Tyler Ackerson, 50 yards. Well, that punt ended up only being a net of 27. As he got it off at 34, they returned at 7. And I'll tell you, Jim, that was about as close to being blocked as you could possibly have. I mean, they really put the pressure on. Kyle just barely got it off, but he did. And now the defense has got a hold for 55 seconds. And now the focus is on Chris Tevis over on the corner. Airy is to the far side. Back to pass. Platt throws. Complete two. Complete. Let's see. The ball could have been stolen. It was. The ball is stolen. The Rainbows have it. Oh, what a play. What a play. Who was the player? Was it Maeva? Maeva right there celebrating. Unbelievable. As he hit, he wrestled the ball, and he stole it away. I tell you, you know, you try to coach that, but you really can't. That comes from a player's heart. And this will be very controversial. The intended receiver was Gilbert. He got his hands on the ball. Maeva was there, wrestled it away from him. Wait till you see this juggle here by Gilbert. He has the ball. He juggles. And here comes my Maeva to pick it up and gather it in. That's really an interception more than eight. It was even it was even more of an interception than I thought it was. Another great angle right here. Trestle's the first guy. Oh, Maeva's the first guy there. Unbelievable. What an effort. 
and Maeva playing in front of 100 of his relatives tonight. All throughout the San Diego and Southern California area, they've come here to watch David Maeva. He comes up with an amazing play. Defense. Offside against San Diego State, 47 seconds left. All the Rainbows have to do now is snap the ball. That's right. This game opened up with the defense, with two interceptions, and it's going to end with the game with the defense coming up with a real unbelievable interception. So again, I said on the other side, a little bit of athletic justice here, the way it's all come to be. All they've got to do with 47 seconds left now, in a first down, first and five, it's a situation. They can just run it right out. There you see his relatives, Mike Gibbo, here to watch David play tonight. They come out in the power eye and taking a knee is Warren Jones. 44 seconds left and the clock will tip away. So this sets up the great showdown. This could be the year. Five and one, Hawaii, next week. 535 live on this station, KHNO, Channel 13. Game is sold out. I'll tell you, I love it, Jim. For the middle of October, it's all the drama you could hope for. BYU comes to town. The annual question will be asked. Could this be the year? 22 seconds left. And another snap of the ball will do it. And the Rainbows will be perfect on the road in 88. Victories at Colorado State, Utah, and at San Diego State. And that'll do it. And the clock now, six seconds, five seconds. And the Rainbows, five and one on the year. San Diego State, one and five. the rainbows sweat in the last oh moments of this game after the rainbows appeared to have this game in control the final 32 to 30 bob wagner shaking hands with some of the san diego status